begins to fade now and I feel like I'm losing time but I don't know how I'm here the sunlight has turned to gray and I feel like I'm losing love again I don't know how I'm here I could feel your heart Somewhere you're looking down I could feel your heart beat I could feel somewhere you're looking down Cause it's you I'm loving And it's you that I want to breathe And it's you I'm loving
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first week of the High School Star League 2015 fall semester. Over the course of the next nine weeks, we'll be watching high school teams from across North America battle it out. I'm Chris Eddie Kidden here with uh, Piscator. We're going to be getting into the first match of today. It is going to be Olympus High School versus Tigard High School B. How are you doing, man? I'm doing absolutely excellent. Here to see some excellent high schoolers play League of Legends far better than I can potentially hope to. But it's the beginning of the school year. Everybody's feeling fresh. This is the best time to get all of your punches in to the, all the other schools in the league. Yeah, of course. It's the uh, first week. Should be a big week for you know a lot of these schools. Just kind of to set the tone, of course. Skill matchups for this first week are pretty much completely random. But after that, we do have a Swiss format. So teams that won the match, won their first match, will be going up against other teams that won the first match. Uh, Teams that tied the match will be going up against other teams that tied the match, so on and so forth. And speaking of which, we do have a two-game match system. So if a team goes 2-0, they get three circuit points. If it goes 1-1, both teams get one circuit point. And these circuit points will be adding up, and we'll be seeing who's at the top of each group or at each division at the end, of course, of our nine-week season. But talking about the picks and bands coming in here, we are going to be seeing Tigrid High School be over on the blue team, taking out Katarina and Fizz. Olympus High School has taken away Mordekaiser and Fiora. And I feel like in these tournaments, when you don't have a lot of experience playing against these other teams, as the season goes on and as the league progresses, you get a better idea of how these teams like to play. But it's really typical to see these solo queue style bans, especially considering the rank disparity between Tiger and Olympus. I believe Olympus's lowest ranked player is higher ranked than the rest of Tiger. So Tiger definitely <laughs> trying to. Yeah. Kind of stifle that snowbally potential that, you know, Katarina and Fizz, once they get going, what can you really, you can't really do anything. Yeah, so we are seeing uh, some pretty typical bands, of course, here. Mordekaiser banned out. I mean, I've seen I, the uh, Mordekaiser a few times and the dragon he gets, it's pretty scary, man. It's a little ridiculous and considering that he's just super powerful in the bot lane yeah. with the experience advantage that he gets, it's... Not surprising at all. A lot of pro teams have been pulling him out in scrims. I can't wait to see exactly what happens in Worlds with oh the Metal boy. Man in the bot lane. That's going to be really interesting. But a band that wasn't uh, put down here is the Garen, which is being covered over here by the first player of Tigrid High School. And looks like that may just be being locked in. So we see some Demasi and Justice coming into this first game. Yeah, absolutely. But picking this first, I feel like it opens up a lot of potential for Olympus to just come back and say because Garen's one of those champions that he's pretty easy to play against if you're playing cohesively as a team. He doesn't really have a way to gap close. He can hit Q and kind of run at you pretty fast, but in terms of immediately coming at you, he can't really do anything. So he's just a moving piece of health. So if Olympus can play their team comp correctly, kite back, he just, he's going to be dead before he can even reach your back line. Yeah, so hovers over here. A possible Blanc pickup. Also, Blitzcrank pickup. I think Blitzcrank has been uh, out of the game for quite some time here. But I mean, to pick it up in their first match of the entire of HSL would be really interesting. But uh, I mean, when you kind of see the rank disparities, you may think that you know it's possible. But I think this Vayne pickup is a much better pick here. It really has just been such a strong uh, AD carry coming into this recent patch. LeBlanc gonna be coming in here, so there's a lot of single target damage from these two champions. Everybody putting on the, I want to carry this game. Give me yeah. these champions that do ridiculous amounts of damage. We saw LeBlanc fall off a little bit towards the 5.17, uh, 5.16 patch due to the fact that her distortion was nerfed quite a bit. But given that she has a little bit of her moots feedback on her W, it puts her in a much better spot. She's not going to instantly delete you like she was able to do in the beginning of the season. But now, she definitely has a space in these team comps. But for right now, it's all single target damage. Olympus definitely going to be looking for picks throughout this best of two series. So we're going to see these follow up picks here. I mean, with Vayne LeBlanc off the table already picked up here for Olympus, picking some pretty scary champions, I'd say, uh, for Tiger to respond with. What do you think needs to come out here against this Vayne, against this LeBlanc? That's, I mean, it's just huge burst potential from those two champions. I feel like the Jin Zhao is a pretty good idea. I mean, up against single target and just up from burst, health is the best way to kind of get it to kind of combat that. But here we see a Tyana pick up in the middle to try and take advantage of that early on and just jump on LeBlanc before she can jump on you. This yeah, mid lane is pretty much going to be who can get snowballing early. <laughs> yeah, there's also another way to dash on, which is the Jin Zhao coming in, as he said. And that is just a lot of 
shut down that back line uh, potential there coming out from those two champions. Now the Jinjiao pickup kind of worries me because right now, as of the live servers, the server that we're playing on right now, Devour has been disabled. I'm not sure if Snorlax is aware of this fact. Maybe he's electing to go uh, Warrior or maybe even Cinder Hulk instead. But considering that the build that most Jinjiao jungles like to go is the Devour build, hopefully that's not something they realize going into the game because if they realize that then, it's going to be very, very interesting. Yeah, so what's also interesting is the Blitzcrank and the Wukong being locked in. Not too sure where these two champions are actually going to be looking to go here. I mean, okay, okay, Blitzcrank wants to go into the support role. Wukong, what is it, top or jungle? Which one do you think? I'm most likely going to be top, considering that Mox, I don't believe that they're in the typical LCS order. And Wukong typically does better top than he does in the jungle. Especially against a Jin Zhao early, who can duel you pretty, pretty handily in the early level 1 through level 3 stages of the game. I would expect this Wukong to go top. And again, it's just another one of these champions that once this monkey gets rolling, King Kong is just going to bash your head in with this little cloud stick, and you're going to be so, so unhappy. But on the flip side, we have a lot more objective pressure coming out in the Tristana pick if, they, if this gets locked in. Right now, the Alistar, also a good choice. The damage reduction, going to be so huge. But it looks like uh, actually Nautilus, I actually do like this. <laughs> Whoa. Wow, and Kha'Zix being locked in. This is a really interesting game, I'd say, to uh, start it out the day with. Right, Tiger definitely has more of that team fighting potential with the single target lockdown that Nautilus can offer. I mean, the dude has four forms of CC in his kit. And Garen and Jin Zhao, if they can manage to get to this LeBlanc after she burns her cooldowns and get to this backline vein, it's going to be... I mean, it's going to be bad news bears for them. But on the other side, you have all of these super sneaky... How many people do you have that can go invisible on behalf of Olympus' team? LeBlanc can do it, Vayne can do it, Wukong can do it, and Kha'Zix can do it. So blue team definitely trying to find these team fighting advantages, but flanks are going to be the name of the game when it comes to these 5 on 5s. If LeBlanc, Vayne, or Kha'Zix can get to the backline, blow up Tristana or Diana, I mean, Tigard, they lose a lot of their damage right there. Yeah, it should be a really interesting game, I'd say, for this... Uh... For the first time, for the first game of the entire fall semester that we're going to be broadcasting, of course, games have started, have been going on, but this is the first game we are getting up on the stream, and of course, after this uh, two-game match, we have another match coming up after it, so you want to stick around for that, but going to be going into the spectator delays, we'll be going over to a quick break, guys, thanks for watching High School Starling, we'll be right back after this.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the High School Star League 2015 Fall Semester Week 1. We're getting into our first game of the day. It's Olympus High School versus Hygrid High School B. And we're going to see who can come out on top here. Absolutely. The first game of the High School League Fall season. Both of these teams definitely wanting to be at out to a very strong start. So if they manage to do that in this best of two series, a lot of points up for grabs. And that sets you up even better for the playoff seasons that happen in both the fall and the spring later on to yeah of course so we are going to be getting on into the rift here seeing where these teams want to go it looks like we may be seeing a group up coming out here from olympus all heading down to the bottom side i mean they have a blitzcrank so when you have a blitzcrank you have to invade and i think uh tiger should really be expecting this I mean, especially considering the level of play that all of Olympus's players play on. Oh. They're going to have to expect oh, some sort of early aggression. The land, barely though. misses, but they have a lot of lockdown. Yeah, and Kiwis are going to be taking a lot of damage here. He's exhausted and ignited, and that's the first blood going over. Shy Jim is the one who picks it up and didn't even need the Blitzcrank hook to land. He just had enough CC, enough damage coming out. They pick up their first blood and looks like they want to hang around for a bit more. Perfectly timed aggression coming out of Olympus there. They knew their level one is absolutely powerful. And what happened there? Pretty much the one champion you don't want to get snowballing and can take advantage of that early gold the best. LeBlanc gets a kill, gets to go back to lane with an extra 400 or so gold and a little bit of XP. I mean, Beautyosity on that Diana is really, really sad right now, I'm imagining. Yeah, so it looks like everyone's going to be hanging around here in the jungle, seeing if they can catch anybody else out, but it'll just be jungle camps that they are able to steal away here. But once again, I mean, this early lead is definitely going to be, uh... It's probably going to tell us a lot about what Olympus wants to do. Coming into game two, as well as just the rest of this game, it looks like taking quite a few camps out of the jungle, taking away the red buff as well uh, as the Raptors. And no one has actually even shown up to a lane yet. And Tigard has to know that this is happening, considering that nobody's in lane. They established their presence early on in the middle now. Jungle. They want to keep the snowball going for Shai Jim here by shutting down his enemy. It looks like he can get the snare down. He's right over in front of the tower, and that's going to be matched with the second kill of the game. And it's just a rolling death ball coming out here from Olympus, picking up the first two kills in the first two minutes of this game. Disaster in the mid lane is the story of this game so far. It wasn't as if it wasn't bad enough that Shai Jim rather got an early kill on that LeBlanc. 
Beautyocity burning flash within the first three minutes of the game, especially when you don't have a lot of mobility on a champion like Diana until you get that Lunar Rush as your ultimate. And this is pretty much a can't me, can't me, can't me sign that's going to happen in the mid lane. If so, we're going to be seeing now, it looks like we're going to be going right back over to the lanes here, but with uh, Shy Jim with one kill ahead and Beauty Yossi at one death disadvantage should be a bit difficult here. We do see the kill going over to Max as well in that top lane, and because of that, he's able to come into lane with uh, a bit of an extra power. It has a Doran's Blade as well as the uh, Crystalline Flask. So it should be a rough early game coming out so far for... Uh, Tiger High School, but we'll see if he can climb back into it. I mean, they do have the late game potential with the Trisana, but going up against the uh, snowballing LeBlanc, the Vayne as well, should be pretty difficult. And CS so far, though, has been fairly even, except for that middle lane. Slight advantage over to uh, Shy Jim here. And that's something I expect to continue on as this game progresses, especially considering that once LeBlanc is going to be uh, able to take that first back, the items that she's gonna come back with are pretty much gonna really bring that lane to a point where Diana just has to pray not to get ganked too much or not die too much. These other lanes have the potential to get snowballing early on. The kill pressure that comes out of Tristana and Nautilus in the bot lane, something that shouldn't be, but the fight going down right now. Oh, uh, look at Kiwis. He's gonna get sunned up against the wall and knocked back a bit as well. Kiwis, the exhaust is down, he flashes away, and they will not be able to get over to him. So just a few auto attacks from going down. Will not be though, and it looks like he will be able to stay in lane, just chug some potions. But I mean, we are seeing the early game pressure coming out of this uh, Blitzcrank here, combined with the Vein. And a Kha'Zix is coming down to help out. Meanwhile, on top lane though, there is some trading going down. Here comes, oh, the rocket jump away, and they actually pull Nightbolt in, but Sundown, he wants to come in, try to pick something up here. But no one is going to be going down as a result of that. Heavy aggression on behalf of Olympus so far in this game. They know that they're the more experienced league team. They know that they're the better players in these solo lanes, but it looks like they're just gonna keep fighting. Yep, Sundown, he's gonna get caught out because he's trying to jump away. Looks like he should be able to, but respect my cat, he's right behind him. The skill will be coming in, the sun against the wall. Oh, and actually, the hook over the wall as well. However, uh, they're still chasing after the main the flash over, and that is gonna be the first kill for Tiger High School. It's Ace Snorlax actually picks it up, but the flash and the auto attack to take down respect my cat, so the aggression does get punished there. Chaos leads to relief on behalf of Tigard's team. Nightwielder comes in with a beautiful hook over the wall to scatter the fight in a bit, and Air Snorlax manages to pick up some very, very needed gold. That goes, does go to the Jin Zhao early on, and Jin Zhao does pretty well in these early on games, so if they can continue to snowball this into the other lanes, Tigard might just have a chance here. So. Score is tied 1-2, to two. there's actually a, or not score is tied, but slight advantage going over to uh, Olympus here. They're also at the slight gold advantage, been seeing a pretty big CS differential in this middle lane between Shy Jim and Beautyocity. I mean, Beautyocity just has to be really on his back foot here. One kill over on his lane opponent, he has one death as well. So, not going to be looking too good here going into the latest stages of this game. We already seen the CS differential on the top end as well, where there's actually been a lot of trading in this uh, Garen versus Wukong matchup, middle lane attempted gank coming out, but Ace and Alex not able to jump onto uh, Shy Jim here. And that's something, lane, you don't, that's something you don't really expect to be able to do to a LeBlanc anyway. Yeah. I mean, when I play jungle, I know the most annoying thing is when you have a LeBlanc in the mid lane, she just kind of distorts away. Mm -hmm. So if they're able to bait that distortion out, they know that it's on cooldown. But now it's even trickier considering that she has her, her mimic up. She can just use double distortion out of there and just be very, very slippery. So, we've been seeing a lot of trading up in this top lane. There's CS advantage going over to Max here. And he's just continually pushing up this lane now, and we can really see that C's exile is on his back foot. Looks like bottom lane, though, some posturing coming out from Ace and Lax. May want to go for a return gank here, but won't be starting it up. There's no summoners on Vayne, so this would be a really good time if they're able to get that CC down. They can get a lot of damage out here. And we are seeing the poking coming out. Respect my cat down to about a fourth of his health there. Right. As we see right now, we see the mid lane get pinged out by Sundown. Given that LeBlanc has hit level 6, there's so much burst potential that can come out of this Kha'Zix and this LeBlanc combo. 
Diana, however, doing a good job. Might have been spotted out by a ward by the Scuttle Crab down by the Dragon Pit. We see the ping for the assist me coming down. We might see these two junglers meet, but right now it looks like they're just going to go back to their own jungle. Farming, farming, farming away. But this mid lane is going to change so much right now. LeBlanc manages to come back with both the Fiendish Codex and a Forbidden Idol. Yeah. The added sustain and the damage and the CDR is going to be so painful. Yeah, and it's, not, it's not just in lane as well. I mean, LeBlanc is such a good champion for him. And so much burst damage uh, can easily close distances here. And with a bottom lane like Blitzcrank and Vayne, I mean, that's just easy kills there. But it's also easy for them. Is this Dragon is here going to be starting up? On it looks like Sundown and Shy Jim here. No wards from the side of uh, Tigrid High School, so it looks like they won't be able to stop this. And this is really scary for Tiger to even attempt to stop right now because, given that the way the CS has been going and given the early few kills that Olympus was able to pick up, the damage that Olympus deals out right now is really front loaded. And when you don't have a lot of resistances or stats, that's not something you really want to get into a closed out dragon pit with. So they do pick up that first dragon, and the gold lead extends to a little over 2,000 right now. Olympus, they're slowly running away from th with this. Top lane trades continue here. Sees Exile really on his back foot. Again, the jumping coming out from Max right under the tower. It's just going to be Cyclone that comes up to pick up that kill. He's now going to be 2 0 and 1. And if you just look at the CS differential. You can see how well he's doing in this lane. Really dominating early game coming out, especially from these uh, solo lanes for Olympus here. And that is just disaster spilling over in the top lane as well. Wukong, somebody that is stifled a little bit if he's not able to get snowballing, but given the fact that he has something like a 35, double the CS of his opponent, of his opposing laner, in addition to the two kills that he was able to rack up so far into this game. On a team comp that doesn't necessarily have the best team fighting, this dude's just gonna come in, cyclone everybody, and do a whole hell of a lot of damage, and Tygaard has to be scared of this later on. Yeah, the, the lane that we've seen the closest has been this bottom lane here, Lucid Panda and Respect My Cat, very close in the CS right here. And we did see some jungle intervention resulting in some kills in the bottom lane, but after that, it looks like junglers have just been looking to farm up here. We do have the uh, Warrior enchantments coming out for both of these guys. And just gonna be looking to output a lot of damage, and just gonna see the Dreadshine down in the bottom lane. He will be coming in though. And look at the damage Ooh. from that Elusive Panda picks up the kill, and Night Wilder now in trouble. It's only him against the two enemy dual laners. He will be able to walk himself away though. But still, a huge damage coming out. The burst coming out of the uh, explosive charge there is absolutely huge. Yeah, you don't really want to get into fights as Vayne Blitzcrank, especially against Tristana Not If you want to start a fight by pulling somebody, that's a completely different story. But the great dredge line that came out and the front-loaded burst damage that Tristana offers early on was just way too much for Vayne to handle. And we here we see, we see that translate into a pretty hefty 400 to 500 gold lead on the opposite Tristana. And this is where Vayne is going to start to feel the pain a little bit. Looks like a fight in the bot lane as they get caught. Oh, uh, yep, there's a hook. Ace Girl just just burst it down. Shy Jim with the kill. Now jumping at the Kiwis. They have him with the chain. Dredge Light. Uh, the ultimate will be coming across, but won't be enough. Sundown does pick up that kill. Yuma on the top lane sees Exile and Max really going after it here. Max trying to get away and actually will to juke him away. The Flash Whoa. is coming in. Sees Exile cannot pick up that kill. Max is able to get to the safety of his tower. Barely flashed away to avoid the Demacian justice right there. So Z's Exile getting a little bit of a little bit of life back in this top lane where this Wukong has just been absolutely destroying him. Sundown respect my cat right over the wall here, but I actually will be spotted up by this ward, so not quite the gank the attempt they wanted, but they did get a very successful gank down in that bottom lane. Lisa Panda is gonna be able to spot this one out as well. Sundown respect my cat. This is on the hunt here. Really aggressive plays coming out from Olympus so far, and really been working out. For their solo laners here, 2 0 and 2 on Shy Jim, 2 0 and 1 on Max. And this is where Shy Jim's gonna get really scary. We see that lane shoved down, and they're looking for roams right now. Yeah, As if LeBlanc wasn't scary enough in lane. In fact, yeah, I started the roam so well. like a minute ago and wants to go right back down to this bottom lane once again. He'll be passing through a ward. But still, I mean, he has so much burst potential, they just can't do anything about it as he distorts in for an easy kill. 
Huey he does get condemned up against the wall. And looks like he should be going down here as well. The chain is gonna land. It's a double kill going over. Meanwhile, though, in the jungle, Max can get cut up by Ace Norlax and sees Exile is gonna be coming after him and Beautyosity. It's 1v3 here. Look at the spins coming out. Max, though, should be going down. And Gil will be going over to Beautyosity. So, 3 to 7 now in favor of Olympus. Sad times at Tigard High. The new name of this match so far. We were just talking about how LeBlanc is so scary when she's able to get these roams off. And what happened right there? They noticed that they were setting up for a dive. They had ways to pull certain characters out with the Blitzcrank hook. And Shai Jin was just able to come in and pop in for an easy double kill. 4-0 and 2 on this LeBlanc. Oh, in the look at right the now, hook Lusa onto Panda. Panda. Looks like he may be able to get away. Just a few more hours. I suspect my cat can knock it in there because the tank wall is coming in. And there's that charge and the burst coming down. Hey, Snorlax takes down respect my cat. And he was not expecting that one at all as the... Uh, Two frontliners come in and he just immediately dies. So another kill going over. I think the uh, the person with the most deaths has been the Cyclone Cat on the vein here, and a Sword of the Occult picked up for Sundown. I mean that's an item. That is an item. Kha'Zix is somebody that snowballs very well. But at the same time, whether it's optimal or not, I feel like most people would say that's probably not the best thing to do as a Kha'Zix. Especially later on in the game when you can just as easily be one shot by this Diana, this combination of the Jin Zhao on top of you as well. Be scary, but shy Jim. Oh. Not shy whatsoever. Yeah, really, really. He's getting in their faces, picking up the kills right here. Five zero and two. Maybe he should be with the one building the stacking on him. He should really get a Magi Soul Steal. Right? Exactly. Mejai's on LeBlanc, super standard. I see he it on the Champion the occult. all the time. He can build sort of the cult of the occult as well. It's just... Yeah. Oh, well, there's a Mejai's. He can build both. <laughs> Last hitting card on LeBlanc. Gotta have that extra Think AD. Of all the value you get. You get so much attack damage and ability time. Yeah, YC again. The top lane though. Beauty comes around. Might be able to shut this monkey down. Oh, bottom lane as well. Lisa Panda chaining off with respect my cat here. Does he have enough, enough first damage? The kill's coming in here. Ooh. And respect my cat will be able to win that trade. Meanwhile, up the top lane, Vidiasi getting chased after here. Oh Max my god. The kill, turns oh my around. god. He picks up the double kill. And to top it all off, the dragon is picked off for Olympus. Huge plays coming in across the map here. Mistakes of your past coming back to haunt your present, getting this Wukong fed early on. I mean, they had a beautiful setup. Wukong didn't see that coming. Beautyosity got in, landed all the CC, but at the same time, this monkey just does so much damage that even with two people on this guy, you can kill him, and he still made it out relatively healthy. Meanwhile, on the bot side, Tristana has been getting the better, uh, the better of Vayne throughout these early engages, but now that she has a Bork, her dueling power is so much stronger, and you know what? Vayne's one of the best duelists in the game. You can't really go up against that as a Tristana as this game goes on. And so it's going to be 16 minutes in, and we're already seeing quite a big gold lead. Quite a big gold lead here. Gold lead for Olympus. 8,000 up right now. They have two dragons and two towers in the advantage as well. Shy Jim is going to be pushing into this middle lane. Uh, we do have a jungler on the side here, Ace Nurlax. Does he really want to go in on this LeBlanc though? Gonna be throwing out the ultimate first with the knockback, but Yolks get pulled right back into the back line. And there's some damage here, but he does because the kill flashes in to get the shutdown. Beauty Eyes. Beautyosity may be paying for this one. Respect by Cat coming in. Oh, it won't be enough though. Because he's exile. He wants to join the fray as well. And he has some damage being for put down. Gonna be chasing after this AD carry vein, but actually has to run away. Voice the flash. And here comes the rotations, as he said. Not all the central sauna looking to join into the fray here. So is Max though. We're seeing quite a few champions join up. Won't be seeing any fights here just yet. Respect my cat and Max looking to push down this wave. I like how Kiwis immediately saw Max and was like, okay, this idea just got a lot scarier. This Wukong, they're just so terrified of him. This tier 2 tower is gonna go down due to the fact that their Blitzcrank completely zoning them out of any area where they can try and get some wave clear. And the threat that Wukong is offering right now with 4-1-1 one, and one in terms of stats. I mean, his presence alone, he doesn't even have to do anything. He can just stand around fights and scare everybody away. So push here onto this middle lane here. Kiwis maybe taking a little bit of excess damage. He may pay for this one. Look at the hook right back into the back line. A Snorlax actually one. He wants to jump to the back line without the hook. 
dumps it himself, but instead he just goes down to respect by chat. And they want to chase Zappy. There's so much damage coming out of Olympus, and they're going to be very persistent as they try to push in. Shiny wow. Jim jumps in. The elusive panda just gets erased. So we're slowly starting to see exactly why. LeBlanc and Wukong can be absolutely devastating, but here we go again, right wow. into the tower, into the air! The Cyclone into the back line, sees Exile being chased after. We'll be under that tower though, we'll be able to stay alive. There'll be another tower going down in the middle lane, inner tower, and that will mean four towers in the lead here for Olympus High School. Tigard at this point, they're just praying that Olympus manages to throw two, three, four, seven skirmishes in a row. This might be one of them. Well, gonna be able to catch off that AD carry. Another shutdown, a lot of shutdowns going over to Ace Snorlax here, and he does have the most kills for his team. He's really just been trying to jump into that back line, burst somebody down. We saw him early in the middle lane, just flashed in to get that kill on the Shy Gym. Speaking of which, gonna be finding IQEs, and just look at the damage. Chunky down here, the shield will be coming in. Looks like he may be able to walk away from this one, but the burst damage is a little bit stronger. Shy Gym cannot catch up. It said has to back away so close to picking up another kill for himself to getting more stacks on that Medjai's, but won't be able to. Oh, Max. I don't think this is the position he wants to be in here. Gonna get knocked up. He thought he was engaging onto one, but it's actually three members that are here. Jim is here. And that's gonna be the kill for the ace. That's gonna be the kill for Ace Norlax. If this game was a little bit closer, Ace Norlax the presence was oh my gosh, here she comes again. Yeah, the damage is coming out. Shy Jim picks up one. Now onto Ace Norlax. A double kill for him. 9 1 and 4 on this LeBlanc. 13 stacks so far. Looking to pick up more. But looks like they will just be backing away from this for now. I mean, if you look into the League of Legends dictionary and you look up the term snowballing, you'll see a picture of Shy Jim right now. 9 1 and 4. 13 stacks on the Soul Stealer right now. Gonna pick up that Wooden soon for the extra burst on top of that because right now Tigard being down almost 10,000 in gold at 20 minutes into the game. I mean, the best way to combat upfront burst damage is just straight up health, but when you don't have money to even buy any health items, Shai Jim gonna run the train on this map for the next 10 20 minutes before Garen and Jin Zhao can even get remotely close to a point where they can start fighting this off. The Sword of the Occult on Max as well. They're just building these stacking up to early Guardian Daniel from Respect My Cat. I think he's he's just trying to protect his KDA right now, but I think uh, so should Nightwheel. They're so far living the support dream 0 0 and 10 on the scoreline. And that's just the dream when you're support. No kills, no deaths, all assists. He's been having some pretty on point hooks here. To just bring someone to the back line and it's been easy pickings to get the burst down after that. Right, I mean, Night Builder, I know supports are... I mean, they're just walking wars, right? Who gives supports actual credit when they deserve it? But the hooks and the picks that he's generating in these, like, extended sieges where... I mean, LeBlanc, you're not oh, really relying on her for Max the Max coming in right. from the side, right into Ace Nilox. He went for the flank here, yeah. And looks like he wanted to take him down. That's the jungler with the most kills on the team. And Sundown will be showing him who's the real king of the jungle. He takes down Kiwis as well. And now looking to push in on for more into the middle lane. Comes Shai Jim right in top of Elusive Panda. And the burst comes down. Nothing that Trisana could there is nothing that Trisana could have done there. We're gonna be seeing his top lane tower going down as well. 21 minutes in such a dominating lead for Olympus. I'm not one to say that games are over before the Nexus has fallen, but right now Olympus is 99% gonna win this situation. They keep I mean, getting just have a... it's just impossible to deal with. We have all those stacks going in your favor. It's just very hard to not have enough damage to kill somebody. Gideasi getting out of respect my cat here. He's just going to be jumping away and he just pick up the kill there. Max though, he may be paying this one. Ace Norlax cannot get into that back line. Ooh. And it's going to be condemned. It's not enough actually to take him down. Shy Jim over the wall. He's trying to complete the kill. He gets out to lose a panda, but he just falls himself. And they try to go in for these kills. But not going to be working out. See that sound. I'm chasing after respect my cat. He will be knocked up. There is going to be the ultimate pop tier for Respect My Cat. We're gonna get someone down. Exhaust will be thrown down. My QEs, but they just bring him back in with the hook. Respect My Cat does pick up the kill. Meanwhile, across the map, the dragon is taken down. 
Our second line cat just wants to continue to push it onto here and actually runs right into this tower. Not too sure if that's where he wanted to go. He's gonna be respawning presence to the Guardian Digital flashes away and gets a tumble flash from Ace Norlax. He's so close to dashing again to pick this up. Oh, but that hook away, Ace Norlax! He cannot wow. get super spent by Cap picks up the kill. And was that a mistake that they were able to turn into a uh they were, they were able to get the uh, the win from her is that just extended BM baits coming out? You decide. I mean, that's a great question. I think we're baffled enough by the second item GA buy out of Vayne. And the fact that she just purposely procced it under tower. <laughs> it ended up working out for them anyway. Given the fact that Tigard just doesn't have the money. Yeah. You don't have the money to buy the items. If you don't have items, you're not going to do damage. If you're not going to do damage, well, you're probably going to die. Because in League of Legends, the other team wants to kill you pretty, pretty badly. Oh, man. So it looks like uh, more damage to be coming out here from Respect My Cat. And even more damage from the rest of the uh, damage dealers for Olympus High School. Stacks continue to go up. There's actually, was that 19? I think I see now on Chai Jam, and he's looking to get his 20th here as he is just uh, poisoning the bush, waiting for someone to just pop out so he can take him down. And we are seeing the stacks coming up here for uh, the Sword of the Colts on Max and Sundown, and actually an Infinity Edge on Sundown. I mean, I don't think that's the best item. Uh, for the uh, for the Kha'Zix. I think you'd agree. I think most people would agree that it's not the best item for a Kha'Zix since you're not really relying Critical so much on auto attacks. <laughs> but at the same time, hey, it gives you a lot of AD. If you get a crit off when you jump in with your leap, then they're yeah. just going to die even quicker. But right now, it's just ultimately saying, you know what? We're so far ahead. You can't deal with our LeBlanc. Our Wukong's just gonna blow you up. So I'm Kha'Zix. I can build whatever the heck I want right now. I mean, Sundown can pretty much build Oh, respect this point. my cat. He's been super caught off here. Will he go down and get into the back line and look at the three members going right into the back. But here comes the Cyclone. So much damage coming off the back. He gets a double kill. He gets away. He's exiled. Gets thrown right back into the back line. But he's not able to pick up a third for himself. That's a double kill coming in. It's actually a a three for two in favor of Olympus, so somehow still coming out on top after Spec Find Cat just gets completely caught out. You want to go for this tower now, Night Wielder look, gonna be looking deadly with these hooks here as Shy Jim and Sundown look to push in. Shy Jim just tries to do the job by himself and get the burst down, but Elusive Panda is true to his name and is able to get out. So a uh, interesting fight coming in, two for three, nothing coming up after it really. No rewards for Olympus after picking up that team fight win. And when you're Tigard, you'll take those three for twos any time that when you any time that they present themselves. Because when you're this far behind on gold, you're gonna try and get it in any manner that you can. Sure, they lost three of their own teammates in that exchange, but if Olympus continues to be overzealous and cocky like that in those situations, as we saw people, they're still assassins. If they get jumped on, they are going to get deleted. Yeah, you gotta look at this uh, Wu Kong's build. This the Mejais is and the Sword of the Occult. This is the. Uh, I like how he gets it after you guys as well, but. Find C's Exile. Won't be able to get uh, some stacks off of him. Meanwhile, Shy Jim looks like he wants to farm some stacks, but it's four members around in the bottom half of this jungle, and he has to double distortion and flash away. Uh, looks like we respect my cat's turn as he's moving into the jungle as well, but the entire team of Tiger is here, so. I'm sure you want to stay well away from there. If I'm Olympus right now, I'm probably looking to end the game as soon as I can because these items are so reliant on snowballing. And when you're buying these as kind of like ways to flex your own muscles and say, hey, look how strong of a team we are. We can build these suboptimal build and still do well. It opens up the window for Tigar to find those picks and find those favorable engages like we saw in the last mid lane engage. But right now, they're pushing up it with all those items. Sees Exxon tries to jump in, but actually just gets snared up and pulled right back into that back line. No one on the same page there. Master though, he's gonna be caught off on the side. Sunshine tries to jump in, he's still alive, he's still alive, but he will be going down. The double kill so far for Lucifer Panda. Shy Jim is gonna go low, he does pick up two, but they just jump again to finish him off. Can they catch him though? He is so far just trying to spread himself away, but oh, there is the explosive shot. It ticks down. 
Street kill is over for Elusive Panda. However, you look over at the bottom lane, it's just been a solo push right here for Respect My Cat. Going full double lift now as he just solo push and farm in that bottom lane. Trying to take down this inhibited tower. A big slice of humble pie for Olympus right there. We saw them go in one at a time. We saw LeBlanc go in, then we saw Wukong come in from the side, and then we saw Kazu just jump into the middle of them. Respect my cat. Uh, now respecting Aussie. them enough. Oh, however, he will get to pick up one and two. He's no way he has enough damage. And here comes a Storlox. He should have enough here to jump in. He tries going. The kite should be coming oh, out. Oh, can he survive yeah, though? Play. Oh, this oh my god! To survive. And he can pick up the second one on IQ's. That's gonna be three kills going over to respect my cat on that vein. And he actually sold the Guardian's Angel and picked up that Phantom Dancer. That may have been the right decision there. As he 1v3s. Here comes he's exile though. There is a nemesis mark for respect my cat, so he really wants to take this guy down and should be able to Demasi Injustice slams it down. That will be respect my cat going down. He's exiled, finally able to clean it up. I mean, if you're on a hyperscaling champion like Bane, you're gonna be really happy to pick up three kills there because you got to that laking status even quicker. And given that the gold situation right now is in very, very dire straits on behalf of Tigard, with 20,000 being the difference right here. I mean, Olympus still has a lot of time to pretty much do whatever they want, but like this! Wow. Alright. That was a lot of damage coming out to Lucy Panda. And staying true to his name where we can't see him on the map. One minute he's there, one second he's there, one second he's not. Uh, but this time it was due to a huge amount of burst coming out. Max will be caught out by uh, Judge Line, but we will be seeing a bit of a siege coming out. It's 29 minutes in here, and what's really surprising is that Olympus just hasn't closed out the game right now. Or maybe in the, in the last 10 minutes you have... I mean, it's kind of a thing, maybe it won't matter too much for this game, or maybe even this match, but in the long term you just really have to be careful about getting complacent in these games. Uh... However, though, it looks like Nightwild and Shy Jim going to be looking to set up a trap here. Oh, they, might have, they may know it's there! Oh, they know they were there, and the uh, hook will not be able to land. The test of the trap is not acting. They're looking for maybe a squishier target, but Shy Jim just wants to go in now. He wants to get those stacks. He wants to get the kills. He actually went from 19 stacks to 10, but he may get more here. Lucy Panda has to jump away. Now he's really getting it right into the middle of the enemy team. And here comes Max from the side, right to the back line, and that's the kill going over to Max. He gets so many knockouts with that Cyclone. And it's gonna be Sundown and Shy Jim trying to join up here as well. Respect my cat is actually still down in that bottom lane. So it's a 3v4 in the middle. And we are just seeing Olympus trying to push down to all three lanes right now. It's so hard for Olympus try and take these towers without getting some sort of picks first because in terms of sieging their sieging is not very good you're not going to rely on LeBlanc for the wave player she wants to use that for the mobility and the damage and Bane we know she doesn't do AoE and Sundown Sun has that oh man a Snorlax going to be going down as well respect my cat Ooh, just kills that tower before dying to it but this should be a very very easy kill for Seize Exile or Elusive Panda jumps out of nowhere and does pick it up. However, that's gonna be one inhibitor tower down. Here's a second one as Max is able to push down onto it. Gonna be waiting a bit just to take it down. And now it looks like they will be making their exit here. So two inhibitor towers down slowly but surely Olympus High School just pushing into the base. I mean the game has completely changed at this point, not having those towers there. Now it's pretty much a matter of they can just walk in as five, kill everybody, take the two inhibitors, and pretty much win the game off at this point. Because who needs wave clear when there are no towers there? Yeah, so... She's exile wants to jump in on the Shy Jim here. Has an Emesis. Ooh, the hook may have actually helped out uh, She's exile there, but just shy of landing onto him. And Shy Jim will be continuing to push on here as he just continue the pressure coming out. Looks like item builds coming in here. Oh, Shy Jim over the wall trying to burst on someone. Use the flash to get over that one, but will not be working out from anyway. The build's coming in. We actually see uh, Max sh <laughs> selling away that score to Diaco. May have been the smart idea here. Sendon is down to five stacks on his. So uh, he's also building into the Bloodthirst for now. So he's just going to be building into those high attack damage items. We'll see how it goes. 
But Olymp is definitely in a situation where if they weren't building these troll builds and they were actually building optimally, this game probably would have been over about 8 minutes ago. Because we see the armor slowly starting to stack on behalf of High Guard. Right now, they look like they just want to take the Baron, and that's going to help their pushing so, so much more. Because High Guard, I mean, they can't hold him off right now. And with the Baron on top of that, I don't see what else they can do. That's going to be Baron going down. This should be a fairly easy win here to end off the game. I mean, Baron Empowered Minions is going to be so strong as they push onto the base. Only one inhibited tower left alive. Bane just continuing to split push down in that bottom lane. And, I mean, there's not many people who can really deal with that. Bane should be taking multiple. Actually, last time it took four. And look at this gigantic minion. The gigantic melee minion here. Banner and Commander coming down to help push in. Do we can get caught up? You will be thrown into the back line. See Dexel trying to do what he can. Yuma on the bottom lane. Respect by Kaz. The one got with two. The can't land the CC. And those are just two easy kills coming out for the Vayne. So much damage coming out. This has to be the end of the game here. Night Willa try to jump in. He wow. does pick up the kill. That's the first kill of the game for him. And this should be the end of it. Olympus High School. 33 minutes in after a pretty dominating game throughout the entire ma uh, game. We'll be moving up one to nothing in this match, so we'll be getting into match, uh, game number two very soon to see if uh, Olympus closed out 2-0 or if it will be Tiger to high school be able to tie it up one to one. There's a Nexus going down. Uh, Chris Couture, before we go over to a quick break, any final thoughts on that game? Tiger High School really need to get into a situation, or a mindset rather, where they have to shake that off. I know Olympus kind of came into that game with a solo queue mentality, but at the same time, there were a lot of opportunities where Olympus looked like they might start giving too much of their gold away. But then again, I think this game was pretty much a demonstration of all the lanes getting outlaned. We saw at the beginning, the invade went terribly on behalf of Tigard. Well, it went really well on behalf of Olympus. They were the one who were invading. And then beyond that, even in lanes where the level one invade didn't really necessarily have a gold influence on, we just saw every single lane pretty much lose in that regard. So they really need to step up their individual play. Right now, Olympus just looks way too strong. Yep, well, we'll be seeing, we're going to be seeing what happens in the second game coming after a quick break. Before we go, we do want to give a shout-out to our sponsors for helping support the iSchool Sterling. That would be Twitch, New Egg, Rockcat, MSI, Jinx Apparel, and Loot Crate and Tespa. Guys, we're going to be right back. We'll begin to game number two of Tiger High School B versus Olympus. Olympus up one to nothing.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going back into this match. It's Olympus High School versus Tiger to High School B. So far, Olympus is up one to nothing. It's the high school start late 2015 fall semester week one. I'm Crusader Kid in here with Piscator. Piscator. Oh my gosh. We'll be working on it. We have three more games to do this. Or I guess two more games to do this. We'll, we'll be working on this one. So first ban is going to be just Sonic coming out Olympus. Now on the blue side here after a very, very dominating game coming out from them. Would you expect to see some uh, targeted bans? So I'd say I would. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see targeted bans. But at the same time, I don't think pick ban was the issue in that game. When it comes to team fights... Tiger did, uh, Tiger did have the better composition, but Olympus just got so far ahead so early that it didn't even matter. We saw Wukong and Kha'Zix building things like Mejais and Sword of the Occult, and it just kept working because they were like 15, 20,000 gold ahead. So right now, they really have to think about their own individual laning performance because you, when you go down 30, 40 CS in the first eight minutes of the game, you're pretty much saying, all right, I'm going to be irrelevant. But then again... First game, you might have been a little bit nervous. You might not have been as warmed up. And now that you have, you had an opportunity to see exactly how Olympus is playing, it gives Tiger a lot more tools. Yep, so we're going to be seeing, looks like, similar bands to the last game. They did take the Trisana away from Elusive Panda. He did look pretty good on that, as well as Amnesty Zinzal coming off May Snorlax. Fizz and Katarina will be taken away as well. Elise is going to be the last band, so slightly different. I mean, mostly just solo queue bands, though. And that's something I don't really expect for to change unless, well, until we get into the later stages of the season, when teams become a lot more familiar with the meta and with how each other play. And I think what's affecting amateur, well, quote unquote, amateur level competitive play a lot is the fact that we haven't really seen the professionals play on 5.18 too much. We know it's a top lane focus. We know the juggernauts are OP as, OP as heck. So. But no top lane bans except for Fiora coming out so far. So hover over the Echo right here. We'll be locked in. Echo saw some playing in the jungle. Hasn't seen too much play, I think. Uh, I mean, with the most recent patches. Where do you think it's going to go? I would assume. Well, I'm actually. I don't want to assume anything because Echo can go in any sort of lane. I've seen Echo go support before. Not the place you want to send an Echo, but. I wouldn't be surprised to see this one go mid. In competitive play, we typically see Echo go jungle due to the fact that he can just build Cinder Hulk, build straight tank, and still do a lot of damage later on. But Sundown clearly, show well, Shai Jim rather, clearly showing that he wants to be on these kind of carry style assassins that do a ton of damage. The LeBlanc that he played in the previous game was absolutely ridiculous. So Shai Jim might just pick up this Echo for themselves. There's going to be a Maokai being locked in here and the Lee Sin as well. So some uh, pretty solid picks. I think Maokai is, I mean, overall, just a really solid uh, top lane champion. Lee Sin coming back into the favor, of course, because we are on the world patch. Exactly. So, I mean, Lee Sin, you just got to see him out there. And we'll be picked up here for a Snorlax. Also had some pretty impressive plays on that Zinzel. I think Lee Sin has... It's a lot more favorable for the aggressive jungling. Absolutely, but at the same time, Lee Sin's a tricky jungler to play effectively. Especially against a team like Olympus, who was very aware and very cognizant of these early game spikes. We saw them take advantage of their very strong level 1. And we, see, we saw LeBlanc take her ethereal chain level 1 just to make the invade go successful. Lee Sin, if you're able to predict him and play around it, if you shut him down early, you can't really do anything with him later on. Yeah, you can be a meat shield. You end up just forced to buy Cinder Hulk and just build straight tank. But unless you get some sort of godlike insect kick, it's not going to happen. But Jin Zhao actually going over to the other team saying, you know what? We saw your Jin Zhao. It was pretty good. But they're looking to show him exactly how to play the man. Oh, man. So this should be pretty interesting. Max back on that. So it looks like, a uh, yeah, as you were thinking about the mid lane echo coming out. Max on that top lane Wukong. And we're going to see how uh, Tiger just want to respond to this Olympus High School. I mean, after that last game, looked really strong. Um, definitely just, I mean, we weren't closing out that game, though. So, I mean, looking over at the past teams that we've seen just have really good success in the high school, Starling, it'd be interesting to compare it. 
Uh, we've seen, I think, Temple City right now, second place team from the last Grand Finals. They're currently playing in this uh, fall semester. So I really hope we can get one of their games. We can get one of their games soon. I kind of went off in a bit of a tangent there, but their team, I think I talked I talked to the coordinator. He said like, he thinks they're you know stronger than last year. Thinks they can make a run for the Grand Finals. Last picks coming in are going to be the Quirky and the Akali. So some more diving coming off from Beautyosity. He seems to favor these assassins. Elusive Panda going to be going with the Corky for this game. I don't know how well an Akali is going to work against a team with disgusting zoning and team fight like the composition that Olympus is showing right now. You get zoned so easily as Akali because Jin Zhao, you go in with your Shadow Dash and all of a sudden Jin Zhao Crescent strikes you into his own backline. And you know what? You're a dead ninja all of a sudden. And Wukong can just jump in, press R, and insta win these situations. But Corky, a lot safer of a champion. Definitely has a very powerful mid game. And, you know, it is world's time. So seeing the Corky man himself is not something that's super surprising. Looks like we might see this Blitzcrank once again, though. Yeah, it looks like uh, going to have to hover over there. Lucian, I think, is a pretty interesting champion to come out. A lot of uh, interesting champs, I think, maybe just... Could be good practice for Olympus to get these champions out in the first week, see what they want to do. I mean, when you get into the nine week grind, you don't want to be playing the same champions over and over. So it looks like the last pick, it's going to be the bottom lane of Lucian and Blitzcrank locked in here. So no vein coming out from uh, from the AD carry here, but we're going to see how he does on the Lucian. It's a champion we don't see too often anymore. Yeah, especially considering the amount of. Uh dive and the juggernauts in the top lane who just like to sit on your back line and just press all their abilities and just kill you considering that lucian has a range of 500 we're definitely seeing a lot more favor for those champions who can peel for themselves that's why tristana and vayne are becoming so so favored by these high level teams because vayne can just condemn somebody away go invisible tristana can buster shot and rocket jump away to put like 20 teamos of distance between you so this is definitely a brawly type team coming out of Olympus. They're very short range. Lucian is the only ranged one here. I guess Wukong kind of has that ability that makes his auto attack range a little bit longer. But for the most part, these guys are going to want to get up close and personal. And what do they bring in response to that? They saw the Blitzcrank was providing a lot of great pick opportunities on behalf of Olympus. So Tiger, being a little bit afraid of that, responds with the Morgana in the bot lane. Yeah, so looking over at these team comps, I mean, you kind of have to expect that Olympus High School are going to want to go for that early envy like they did in the last game. They may have a little bit less, I think, early game crowd control. Most of it is just on that, uh, on the Blitzcrank, but I mean, you have a Blitzcrank on your team, just have to go for it. The hook by itself could just be the kill uh, to get first blood with. So we're going to see, um, hopefully Tiger prepares for that. Because uh, that invade last time was pretty sick coming out. And they got two kills basically from it as they picked up the kill in the bottom lane before the minions even spawned. And then minions spawned. They just all went over to middle lane, got another kill there. Teams are going to be locked in here. That was going to be the Morgana for the last pick. Interesting champion, I'd say, coming out here. Um, we're going to have to see how Tiger the High School do in this. Of course, they can tie up the match here so they can both get one ticket point each. Or Olympus High School could go for the 2-0 and have uh, three circuit points to start out their uh, high school Star League fall semester. Guys, we're going to be getting into the second game of this match. We'll be right back after a quick break.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the High School Starlight 2015 Fall Semester. It's week one. It's game number two of Olympus High School versus Tigard High School B. I'm with I'm Christina Kid in here with Joshua Piscator Lee. Yeah, Piscator. We're getting there. Practice makes perfect. It takes people a Actually, long time. I'm thinking of just changing it to Crusader Puppy. All right. Yeah, that sounds really. That sounds a lot easier to say. Right. Yeah. Well, we are going to be getting into the second game of this two game match for Circuit Points. Olympus High School looking to get their second win of the High School Star League season so far, which would give them three Circuit Points. Or, or and I should say, it's going to be uh, Tiger High School be looking to pick up their first win. So we can go one to one in the match, pick up one Circuit Point for, uh, for themselves. And of course, one Circuit Point will be going over to Olympus in that case as well. And we are going to be seeing this early invade coming out. Yeah, early aggression once again. We saw this go so well for Olympus in the previous game. They were able to get their mid laner fed early. And that kind of snowballed into all the other lanes. Snowballing into the other lanes. Pretty much resulted in easy victory for Olympus. But Elusive Panda, actually a little panic that he might get caught out there. Actually elects to take Valkyrie first. Corky is somebody with a lot of damage, level 1. That's going to affect their laning presence so much. Yeah, so no early kills coming out. I'm sure there's a very disappointed... Uh, there's going to be a very disappointed Olympus team here. Won't be getting that explosive early start like they did in the last game. Instead, they just got in, got the wards down, and we'll be backing away. So it looks like we may just be a bit of a slower start. Not going to be seeing all you know, the jungle camp starts coming out for these guys either. Looks like I'm going into a going into a quick pause looks like a bit of technical issues coming out for one of these players and uh, hopefully you can get back into this game fairly soon so to talk about this game Piscator how do you think uh, this one's gonna go so early game we don't see the explosive start we are gonna be seeing the laning phase coming out just pretty standardly and how do you think some of these matchups should go I feel like unless Tigerd is able to get some of these lane snowballing, namely the Akali, Olympus, they just have to wait out this game to a long enough point, and they're just going to automatically win. Because in terms of damage, Tiger doesn't bring a lot to the table unless we somehow get to 120 minutes and Morgana has six AP items as well. And Corky falls off really heavily in the late game, especially considering that Shy Jim, uh, Mox, and Sundown going to bring a decent amount of tank stats to the table. Akali, single target, when you're up against this brawling type of a team fight comp, it really, really sucks to be somebody like an Akali, because you just get jumped on by everybody. You probably won't even be able to get near them, and once you do, I mean, you're going to be able to get some damage on somebody and just get absolutely deleted. But then again, a snowballed Akali is one of the scariest things in League of Legends. I know back in Season 4, she was pretty much a permaban in these lower elos. But then again, Olympus High School has shown such resilience and such strength in the previous game that Tiger, unless they somehow get off to a miraculous start, and a lot of that's going to rely on I Snorlax on this Lee Sin, because Lee Sin falls off really heavily later in the game as well. So early game, if it doesn't go well, I don't see how Tiger can win. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, we saw this Olympus High School really strong in the last game. We're going to see what... They bring to the table here quite a few interesting picks, and uh, of course, you gotta pull that out in the first week. See what you can do, because once you get into that nine week, nine weeks of playing, points really start to matter, especially when you get into the later part of the season. And uh, I mean, it'll be interesting to see where Olympus High School stands after this year. Uh, not too sure what the um, competition is really like in their groups. It should be pretty equal in terms of skill across all the groups. Like we should be seeing some pretty high level teams. Not too sure where Olympus stands though. I mean, in the past we've seen the highest level teams have like master tier players on them, on them and whatnot. Uh, I mean, the, the highest ranked teams get to diamond one and ranked fives, things like that. And that's kind of what these teams should be aiming for. If they really want to make that run over into the winter championships as well as the spring playoffs, which go into the grand finals, which uh, just kind of lead us right into the talk about how the format works here at the high school star league. The top teams from each group. In the fall semester, move on to the winter championships as well as the spring playoffs. In the spring playoffs, the fall semester top teams meet the spring semester top teams. And uh, 
we just see who is the best high school in North America after that. However, we're going to be getting right back into the match here. Get the unpause up. And we'll see how this game breaks down. And then again, looking at Olympus's team comp, we were talking so much about how Olympus, their scaling is really good, their team fight is really good, and how their team comp works against the opposite team comp works well. But they have one of those types of team comps that I like to say has a lot of self-outplay potential. Right now, like, especially like, you know when it's your first time playing Yasuo, you think you can do everything just like Bjergsen does. You go in, you EQ somebody, and then all of a sudden everybody jumps on you and you die. Like, Echo, Wukong, Jin Zhao, and Lucian, I feel like, are all those types of champions that you can try and pull off some sick is, LCS big play. What is Blitzcrank doing? He just wanted to uh, just walk around the jungle, take a lap this around. This is my Blitzcrank. Oh, and actually, hold up, top lane, we are seeing the early game coming out from Sundown, forces the flash of the CZX uh, real fast there. And yes, the smite Blitzcrank, because... I mean, are you... wait... Are you even able to smite out the small minions any Oh, you are. Okay, so you can smite <laughs> out the minions and get the grab. I'm glad he was able to do that for me. I mean, so this wasn't is something... Sure the siege or not, but you can get the smite out. You can grab and smite the minion that's blocking it for some high-level plays. Right, and this is something we've seen high-level pros like Krepo try and experiment with, especially with champions like Thresh with Blitzcrank. But then again, it really inhibits your early laning phase a lot. And when you're a lane with such high kill potential, like Lucian Blitzcrank, you want this mid lane. I don't know if this is going to go well for Beauty He's able to walk out of there, looks like a militant piece, but has been taking a quite a bit of damage. IQ, he's going to get a bit of a knockup here and gets pulled back. Where's that the flash? Meanwhile, though, Ace Nurlax trying to get right behind. But Yassi's getting it taken low here. And Shy Jim able gets the sun down. The Q follows. But it's the first blood coming out of Shy Jim. And the double stun on Beauty Asi and Ace Turnalax was huge there. Definitely a win on behalf of Tiger there, considering that they were able to get gold on two people. With Shai Jin picking up the first blood, a little bit of extra gold to be found there, in addition to Echo having a very powerful mid game as well. We'll see if Ice Norlax can use this extra money to really get their other lane snowballing, because like we said before, if unless this Akali gets snowballing later on, she's not going to be able to do a whole lot. Check my cat throwing out the uh, hook, but didn't have the smite for the minion. I may not have landed uh, despite that. However, it looks like Ace Nurlax, you really want to be present so far in this early game, moving down to his bottom lane, just in case anything happens down here. It actually looks like he actually does want to go in, so we'll be working his way around. Well, on the mid lane, we see them trying to set up for some sort of gank here. But Jinja does walk over some vision, so they're going to know exactly what they're planning. Lisa Panda able to dodge away from that hook. So, we're gonna be 1 1 here so far to start the game. So, a much better start in this game than the last for Tigrid here. We'll see how they go transitioning uh, into the later stages. Already, we are seeing a huge difference in CS and uh, in the middle lane. A slight CS in this top, a CS difference in this top lane. Hook coming out versus Elusive Panda. We cannot get the Black Shield down fast enough. He does get. Hold in there, but anyway, 27 CS to 14 is the difference in this middle lane right now. It's pretty big, and this is something that you know we're not unfamiliar to, considering that this is exactly what happened in the previous game as well. Shy Jim just put the absolute hurting to Beautyosity when they were playing that LeBlanc into Diana matchup, and especially since Echo has a lot more tools to get lane shoved out and last hit a lot better. Somebody like Akali can really suffer in those situations. Man, yeah, respect my cat. Wow. Positioning. Really aggressively and actually pays quite a bit for that as the Dark Binding comes out. And they put down a lot of harass on him, but he's really just looking to you know, get the zoning down. The threat of that hook is just so strong, as you can see. The threat as well coming from these solo laners for the side of Olympus is huge as well. They just continue to zone out members of Tiger High School B and they just have such a big CS advantage stacking up here Max on this Wukong looks yeah. to be a favorite champion at least. The bot lane. The bot lane. They were play playing so aggressively with no wards. When you're in the first fight, you don't oh, have wards, but here they come. Lucid Panda, he gets caught out though. He's still able to survive. Has the black shield down. Nice healer. Does pick up the kill, but Ace Nox comes in. They can't find the kill to respect by Kaz. He flashes away. Flash from will there as well. Who are they going to be going for here? Spike my Cat is the closest target, and they will be able to take him down. So Ace Snorlax gets his second kill of the game. 
But, I mean, everywhere he goes, picks up a kill, but the laner dies as well, unfortunately for him. Now it's 2-2 two to two in the team score. So much aggression from Olympus. They were shoved up to that tower for so long. They were pretty much asking to, that, to get ganked at that point. Blitzcrank had run out of pots like four minutes ago. They were constantly BM spamming recalls right in front of the tower. So, of course, you're going to have this giant dinner bell on top of you. Meanwhile, the oh, mid lane might see gank come through. Yeah, we are seeing Sundown coming in. BDR, so I don't think he has any chance of getting himself away here. As he still shut down, tries to dash out. Ignite does get dropped. That is going to be the kill. Shy Jim is be able to pick that one up. Didn't really need the help there from the jungler. Just had some extra pressure, though. And now it's going to be 3 to 2, 7 minutes in. Ace Nolax just wants to make his way into the middle lane. He wants to get that solo lane. EXP is what it looks like here. So we talked a lot about how Tigard needs Lee Sin and Akali to get snowballing. They have one of the two so far, but what he didn't take into consideration. Oh, oh the Snorlax. flash kick right under the tower. However, respect my cat was there to help out Sundown and just absolutely spoils that move there. Huge though, that was a great uh, kickback. I was waiting to see that happen as well. Bottom lane teleport coming out from Max and he absolutely just sandwiches these guys in. That's Elusive Panda going down first. Night Wheeler finds a kill onto IQEs. Very nice teleport coming out from Max there. This is why it's a good idea to sweep those brushes, keep track of those global teleport timers. That was just such an easy situation for Max to come in and just pick up those two early kills. And we saw how powerful and how scary this Wukong can be if they get snowballing early on. Yeah. And here he comes into the middle lane as well. Looks like won't be able to get a uh, kill down there, but... Oh man, respect my cat. This is the true... This is the true uh, potential of the Spy Blitzcrank. Please watch the Blitzcrank right now, because he's lying in wait to steal away this red buff. Won't be able to, and actually, may pay for this one. However, over on the other side of the map, Shy Jim does take down Beauty Ossie. I respect my cat, able to steal away the red buff. But actually, you'll be having some help coming in for him soon. It's going to be Shy Jim, as well as Max moving up here to catch up. Ace Nolak splash with the ball from Max. He jumped in here. Respect my cat. He will be going down, but Sundown jumps right in there. Shy Jim gets the kill onto Ace Nolak. He's exiled. We'll be going down as well. Max with the kill. Nine minutes in, nine to three. Smite Blitzcrank doesn't quite steal away the red buff, but he's able to keep Ace Nolak interested long enough. You get the pick down on not one, but two members of Tiger High School B. And it actually goes over to Shy Jim, but confusion is the name of the game when it comes to that fight. Ice Norlax had to know that somebody was coming. You do a lot of damage as Lee Sin, and as a Blitzcrank, once you blow your abilities, what can you really do? You can stand there, spam, ha, 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 but that's pretty much all you can do. The fact that Respect My Cat stood there for so long had to have tipped him up, but he stayed too long. The rest of Olympus was able to pinch in. They end up turning that into a two for one, and Snorlax loses his buff on top of that, and that goes into the pocket of Echo. So it looks like Push coming in on his bottom lane from IQEs and Elusive Panda. Oh, this could be bad. Jinjiao's I'm gonna get well. to show up, have some nice damage here, and yep. Tower will be going down, but Sundown is here. Night Wheeler looks like though he may get bursted down. The exhaust is on. The Lucid Panda can't get to him. He does pick up the kill, but he will just be falling. That is a double kill for Sundown. Curiosity was trying to move, make his way down to that bottom lane, but runs right into a pink ward. And now he may just get pinched in here. Ace Nolax will be around, but it's four members coming up here. They jump in on the Sundown. They should be able to get this isolated kill, and that's a shutdown going with Ace Nolax. Max does jump in, and now they want to back away. Max will just get the kill. And and there High is five. going to be, <laughs> respect my cat, more like a fist pump there, as he picks up the kill onto Ace Norlax, Ace Norlax with the rocket grab. Fight, 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 everybody fight. Definitely a scrappy time to be in high school. <laughs> At the same yeah. time, on behalf of, a, so we'll have to we gotta bring get some, back, uh, like 40 minutes. We gotta minutes get some to... assistant principals on here to break up these fights. Exactly. Alright, so Max is going to be moving up into this uh, top lane here on the Seas Exile. Won't really be able to do too much. However, in the bottom half of the map, it is Nightbull to jump again and runs yeah, right no into some damage. But Elusive Panda just gets hooked in, locked down. Meanwhile, top lane, Max chasing after Seas Exile. Just one auto, two autos attacks. Away from getting that kill. Won't be able to connect one though. However, the Dragon does go over to Olympus. And that was a really good time for Mox to get on Exile's case. 
because Exile does have teleport out. Meanwhile, I respect my cat not respecting them very much. Oh! Oh, there's the damage coming in. Sundown with the kill on the Ace Snarlax. IQE is going to be running into some damage here as well. That's the double kill going over to Sundown. A 5 1 and 3 on the Xin Zhao. It's a good day to be Xin Zhao, that's for sure. Yeah, we've been seeing uh, Xin Zhao in the last game from Ace Snarlax. did pretty well with it. And Sundown as well, getting quite a few kills for himself here. So, 12 minutes in here. And that's uh, going to be nine kills in the lead here for this side of Olympus High School. Well, let's see what they're going to be doing with it. Some push. I mean, they're definitely breaking up laning phase now. Let's get these push. These towers pushed down. One down in the middle lane. One down in the bottom lane. And now they have three members pushing into mid. And there's really not a whole lot of Ediosity. Oh, the pull oh, around the side! The hook on the Ediosity. Meanwhile, Ace Snorlax is getting picked off by two. Respect my cat somehow still alive with a sliver of health. The Colin coming in. He, though, runs right into a dark binding. Huey's cannot be too much after that Thank binding. From yeah, respect. Uh, sees Exile. Was looking to chase off respect my cats here. Uh oh, he may. Can they find them? Respect well, I'm gonna my give you cats. a mystery skin if he makes it out alive. Oh man, he is trying to just juke. Them out here trying to make the juke of the century right now. And it looks like he may just have to settle for an execute. I don't think you can make this one out without going down. And actually, IQ's does pick up that kill, so no mystery skin for him, unfortunately. But Piscatori does get to keep his uh, right points. A little bit of RP left in my pocket. Still got that. So we are going to be seeing some push here onto the middle lane. And it's just more kills going over to the side, or just more pressure coming out of the side of Olympus High School here. And when you have all these 1v1 champs like Lee Sin and Akali on behalf of Tiger's team, but then you're facing a Wukong that's 3-0 and 4, a Jin Zhao that's 5-1 and 3, an Echo that's 5-1 and 3, your dueling potential is that it's like, it's like a toddler getting into a fight with a US Marine at this point. Like maybe the toddler can kind of spit up on the marina a little bit, gross him out, but at the end of the day, like, Olympus is just way too strong. It's a very original analogy for you, Dimmick. I don't think I've ever heard that one. I'll be here for nine more weeks. Toddler versus a US Marine. We know how that match out plays. Got another yeah, match. yeah, we've seen that quite a few times before. Hey, Snorlax though getting shot hey. right into the Ooh. enemy team. Flashes away, actually. But he's like, tag team from Seize Exile. Say, see ya. And the flash from Seize Exile. Follow up from Respect My Cat, though. He's gonna be getting into minion line, so Might cannot get a hook down. And actually, maybe turned around on you. Seize Exile does jump right back in for some damage. But actually, now he'll be in a lot more trouble. As Shy Jim comes in. Stunned up and taken down. That's the kill for Shy Jim. Unstoppably here. You all stunned down right into under the tower. He will be falling over to Elusive Panda, but not before he's able to get a kill. Now Gila gets caught by a dark binding, but he does see he's able to get the kill down. Flash over the wall, and Elusive Panda cannot follow. That's just more kills going over to Olympus. Panic, chaos, and eventually a lot of people die. Tigard isn't acknowledging the fact that Olympus is taking these really high-risk situations, but they have no choice but to fight back because they're so desperate to get some of this gold back. Respect my cat. <laughs> I mean, that's oh, that's man. another use of the uh, smite blitzcrank. You can steal it away from your own teammates. All right, so I'm just gonna tell all my friends out there: you do that to me, I have no shame in reporting you. <laughs> There is the uh, red buff going over Respect My Cat. It's going to be a nice pickup for him, of course. The sticking power of Blitzcrank with the red yes, buff. Yes, of course. The sticking power. That's what yeah, we're we all know how much of a sticky champion he is. He'll be on that AD carry. You can follow him even through uh, all the kiting days. He has the blue buff as well. Because, I mean, rocket grabs, they take a lot of uh, mana. A lot of mana. 100 mana. down. <laughs> Let me come again from behind, right into the middle of the beam. Remember, the enemy team actually just gets locked up, and he gets taken down. Though here comes the rest, though, of Olympus High. Ooh, come back down here. IQ, it looks like a max range hook right there, and actually the red buff won't be enough to tick down for the damage there. He's able to get away. Shy Jim now. He wants to dive. He actually gets into that back line, gets the kill, and Ash will be able to get back with the chrono shift. 
So gets one kill, gets out very quickly. Max chasing at the IQ he's here. Trying to finish up this kill. Respect my cat actually wants to come in here. Oh, the hook just lands onto the black shield. And I'm not sure that IQBs will be able to get out of this one here. Yep, three members just chasing it onto him. And respect my cat gets killed the red buff. It was actually with the lightning passive from a static field. Oh. That was really fun. I don't think they expected that to happen for sure. Like my cat now, he wants to go for more pickoffs here though. He's exiled. No way he's getting out of this one. It's just a rolling ball of death coming out from Olympus. We're 17 minutes in here. They are five towers up and a dragon up, and looks like they may just want to go for some more pressure on these towers. As they continue to push in here onto the middle lane, the grabs to go wide, but the cyclone lands true. And that will be a kill going over the Night Wielder. And looks like we're going to see them actually have to back away because they don't have the minion line to uh, push down this tower. But the dragon is up so they can get that objective down. So much strappiness from both teams right now. But Olympus can get away with it because they have, what, 13,000 more gold than Tiger? And especially considering that the scaling that their team fight has later on in the game, and the fact that Akali was unable to get snowballing, Lee Sin started off pretty strong, but Snorlax was not really able to make up for the fact that Beautyocity died a few times in lane. Now it's just Olympus kind of charging through and saying, you know what, we own this game, we own this series, we're going to get off to the, <clears throat> to the fall season of the 2015 High School Star League to a great start. Get out of here. Yep. And <laughs> now be 18 minutes in, as we do see some pretty big items coming out. Talisman of the Century finished up, finished up for Respect My Cat. Gonna be great for this, uh, I mean, as we keep saying, Rolling Ball of Death Squad here. We can really get into that back line, and we are seeing kills just continue to stack up here. Shy Jim, 8, 1, and 3 on this Echo. 6, 3, and 4 is a score on Sundown. Zin Zhao. So once again, we're just seeing the pressure coming out into all three lanes. Olympus doing a pretty good job of just keeping these lanes pushing. Trying to keep uh, Tiger High School back in their base as they roam around. We can take down these towers. Here is their sixth tower going down in the bottom lane. Yeah, six towers to one. That's going to be a lot of gold. So... Actually, we jump again here, send down, tries to get into the back line. Actually, may have the back away because it's not too much. IQ he says, pick up the kill. However, Shy Jim is able to finish oh, off. What oh, he finishes off the second one, a double kill. Shy Jim, though, he will be getting caught off here. He gets the Chrono Ship and he gets a double kill over. It's actually for Night Wielder. Four members going down. And Olympus High School is just way too ahead now in this game. I mean, Olympus can just bait all of these fights that look good for Tiger to take. They were able to get Sundown early on because, you know, when you jump under a tower as a Jin Zhao with no extra health or armor, you're going to die pretty quickly. But at the same time, Olympus was able to use the range of the Timewinder and Lucian was able to get a great culling off from way further down in the lane. And considering the gold that they have, they can afford to make these high-risk plays that probably shouldn't work out if you were even in gold. But Olympus... Like we said before, this is kind of like a broken record. I can record myself saying this. They are just way too strong at this point in the game. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they just have, once again, uh, kind of these snowballing champions. And really are putting them to good use here as they continue to supply constant pressure. Once again, you can see all three lanes are being pushed up. And actually, Max on the side here, not too sure what he's looking for. He will actually be finding quite a few members of the enemy team pushed right back into Elusive Panda. Flashes over the wall, but the Q follows from Ace Norlax. But actually, he just runs right to death there. But over the wall, and he's exiled. Everyone's going to be jumping in to try to pick somebody up here. Shy Jim, they actually want to get away from the Chrono Ship. Will be coming in. And he does get some help back. He goes in the IQ. He's beating the Aussie. He's been chasing after the top laner. Now he wants to go back and miss. It's just a double kill for Shy Jim. And he wants to go for more. Beauty Aussie actually runs to Night Wielder. And that's the ace coming in there. A messy fight, but Olympus come out on top. Hashtag calculated? If that was a bait where Mox was like, all right, this is what we're going to do. Lucian, you're going to be all the way up top, and I'm going to bait them. Like, that worked out perfectly. On behalf of Olympus, we thought the Wukong was overcommitting, and then Lucian takes his sweet time pushing in that top wave before he just kind of saunters over mid for the cleanup ace. Like I said, this is only made possible due to the fact that Olympus got ahead so far so early. 
ZZ rot. We got a ZZ rot now. That is happening. <laughs> so effective. Look at that. It's got a few hits on the tower, so. Uh, we got really some happy. of its gold value. So, I mean, you can, you can, it's it's the item that just keeps on giving. He's able to place even more and more portals as time goes on. Oh man. There are a lot of brown shoes on behalf of Tiger's team. Akali's still in the brown bag shoes. Morgana's still in the brown bag shoes. No Jordans for you guys. Oh, Sundown actually wants a diamond onto Elusive Panda here. Runs right into a binding. We still able to pick up the kill of Elusive Panda. And I able to get away fast enough there. So that's a kill. And actually, BD Asu was able to, was able to secure the kill. Now they want to go and try. Jim just jumps right with the sun, gets hit up by a binding though. Getting get exhausted, just drops down and he kick him back. He gets shut down. So a little over aggressive here. And he just gets shut down by all the CC that's coming out of the side of Tiger High School B. Max, so he wants to go in himself. Over the wall, oh. the cat runs right into it. Ace Alex runs right into the binding, was, uh, right into the hook, was not expecting that grab coming out. And now, Respect on Cat wants to continue to chase after as Max continues to move in. He picks up on Gala Cyclone coming in. Get the CC down. Elusive Panda trying to cut himself away here. There's a nice fighting going to be coming in. The rocket grab goes wide. This will be, though, the first inhibitor of the game for Olympus High School. 23 minutes in. Sundown really likes to go balls to the wall. He really likes to dive into these situations where he's one versus three. He's a Jin Zhao who's building full damage, building a wit's end. Wait, that's a Nasher's too. Okay then. Oh. <laughs> so building the Stinger on top of the Phoenix Code is 18 Jin Zhao. Gonna come in for all the heals, I suppose, but this Baron going down so fast. That was, uh, oh well. So we are gonna be seeing this go down. Easy Baron coming off another 23 minutes in. Oh, they still want this. Now they're on the hunt here for the kill. Sundown does go in. Max is gonna be following up here over the wall though. He's exiled just in the middle of everybody. Lose a panda gets grabbed, and he will get taken down. Shy Jim with the kill. That's gonna be two members down here as. Olympus High School is still very healthy and pushing on to the base. Max trying to get on the tail end of Kiwi's here. Will be able to get some damage down, but he runs right into a binding, so we'll not be able to press forward. However, 24 minutes in, we may be seeing a bit of a quicker game than the last one as he pushes in onto the Nexus Towers to Olympus High School. Gonna be able to pick up this first one here, Bidiosity. Gonna be taking a lot of damage. Sundown! Bidiosity is able to survive for a little bit longer. He will just fall eventually. A double kill coming out for Shy Jim. And this is going to be the game here. Sees Exile kind of running for a last ditch defense with Elusive Panda. They just get stunned up and taken down. Now we all there picks up one. He picks up two for the double kill. That will be the game. That will be the match. It's Olympus High School going up 2 0 over Tiger High School. B. B picking up three circuit points from that one for their first match and pretty much win it in a dominating fashion in both of these games. I mean, this was just a typical story of two teams. One. Just overall way stronger than the other one. But like you said, as the season progresses, teams are going to get a little bit balanced out. So Tiger, while they did go down somewhat in a very convincing fashion at the hands of Olympus, they have so much time to come together as a team, regroup, and above all, learn from all these better teams because you're not going to get better as a team unless you get beat by some of the best. And Olympus showing that they are a team not to be messed with. We'll see exactly how they stack up against the rest of the high schools in the North American region as the season progresses. But right now, off to about as good of a start as you can hope for. Yep, of course. That's not the only match that we have up today. It's going to be uh, Irvine High School versus Hawthorne High School coming up over at 5 p.m. PDT. So a bit of an extended break for you guys. Go ahead, go you know, find some food. Uh, get ready for the second best, uh, second match coming up after a quick break. Before we go, we do want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Twitch, New Egg, Rockat, MSI, Jinx Apparel, Loot Crate, and Tespa for helping support the High School Star League. Um, you know, while you're in the break as well, go find out more about the High School Star League. We do have our website, hsstarleague.com. Follow us on Twitter at hsstarleague. Like us on Facebook at hsstarleague. Uh, also, follow the channel as well to see whenever we're streaming. Next week Next week is when we start the full stream schedule. StarCraft 2, Hearthstone, League of Legends, and Dota 2 all coming up on this channel. So, that should be some exciting stuff. However, 
We'll be getting to the next match very soon. Irvine High School versus Hawthorne setting up at 5 p.m. PDT, so that's in about 20 minutes, guys. We'll be right back after the extended break. Sunlight begins to fade now And I feel like I'm losing time But I don't know how I'm here The sunlight has turned to grey And I feel like I'm losing love again I don't know how I'm here
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the High School Star League League of Legends 2015 Fall Semester. It is week one and we're here with our second match of today. It's going to be Irvine High School versus Hawthorne High School. I'm Crusader Kitten here with Piscator. You did it! We did it! Oh, all right, so finally, three, third time's a charm here. We finally get uh, Piscator's name right, which means that we can get a great cast here for our second match, Irvine versus Hawthorne. And uh, I think you were telling me earlier that you, I mean, may know of Irvine High School. Oh yeah, I actually live in Irvine. I work in the Irvine Unified School District. So if I BM them, I'm gonna get fired from my yeah. job. So extra yeah, well, incentive if, to deliver if, a much better cast. Yeah, well, if they BM, then you can, I don't know, do whatever you do. Or I can talk to their principal, get them suspended. Yeah, yeah exactly. 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 So should be having some very nice people in this game. So far, top lane bans. Look at that. Riven, Nar. And Aurelia already banned out from both of these guys. Um, I mean, already seeing this top lane focus that we didn't see last game, surprisingly. Harmoniger being banned out as well is pretty interesting. Hawthorne is on this blue side, Irvine's on the red side. Um, Harmoniger ban is... I mean, I'm just gonna go look through these profiles and see who's the Harmoniger main. Napoleon has... or Napoleon has 71,000 mastery points with the uh, Nidalee here. <laughs> I think so. the highest mastery I have on any champion is Bard at 50,000. And that's from like <laughs> two straight weeks of only playing Bard. So if you I've seen some. I've seen some pretty interesting bands. Uh, I mean, pretty high mastery points. I've seen like a Riven with 140,000. He was uh, positivity. He was a top laner for the uh, first place team uh, last year. He's actually competing this year as well, although for... Four members graduate, and he's the last member for Thomas S. Wood in the first place team. But enough of that. Uh, Irvine High School banning out IHS, so a lot of confidence coming out from them here. As they take away Aurelia, Harmoninger, and Sion from the picks. Going to be going with a uh, Janna first pick, though, for the set of Hawthorne. Yeah, Disengage coming in. Janna kind of fits into any sort of team comp here. Always nice to pick up the win lady. But these bands are really interesting because we said there's a lot of focus on the top lane, but not the top lane champions that we expected to see taken away. Yeah. I mean, this is 5.1a. This is like the juggernaut meta where we see Fiora. Well, Fiora's not really a juggernaut. She's still really, really strong, though. Garen, Darius, champions like that really be prioritized. But right now, it's looking a lot more like solo queue. And like we said before, beginning stages of the tournament, beginning stages of the season. So these players are not quite familiar, so they're probably just scouting just based on like op.gg results. Yeah, for sure. So looks like Lee Sin, we saw that in the last game. We're gonna see Kalista here as well for the AD carry. So I mean Lee Sin we talked about. And now it's starting to be a solid jungler. How is Kalista looking like with this new patch? Kalista's been getting nerfed, 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 and nerfed. It's not so much the damage that Kalista is really prioritized for. It's the utility that her ult offers and the fact that you can't catch the chick. Once she gets her Runan Turrican and her Berserker's Grief, she's hopping around all over the place, so you really need some sort of targeted TC or some reliable backline access to get, I mean, to get access to her because otherwise she's just gonna hop around and when she rends, she just rips like three generations of pain out of you and it's not a fun thing to deal with. But Kalista, something that'll work in pretty much any sort of composition. Meanwhile, Orianna, one of those champions that work in any sort of composition as well. It is world's time, so Orianna coming out, not surprising yeah. whatsoever. Cal Schwarmer, uh, level 29, so we're going to see how well he does, but he's looking to pick up his most played champion, is the Cho'Gath here. Whoa. Uh, 39,000 mastery points, and, and then Nivea coming out from Sun here, at least being picked up for Hawthorne High School. These are some pretty interesting picks, I'd say, coming out from this team. Cho'Gath and Nivea don't see those quite too often. And looking over at the side of uh, Irvine High School, we're going to be seeing, looks like a Yasuo, bit of a Yasuo comp coming out. Uh, the Kalista, Alistar, Lee Sin, and Yasuo being played right into this would be giving them so much knockout. Oh, your voice is going to be gone by the end of this Crusader, Kitten. Oh boy, can't wait. <laughs> the Wombo combos are going to be everywhere. There's another day of casting for me tomorrow, of course, guys. You have more High School Star League action coming up tomorrow. This is the last match of the night, but we'll be starting it up tomorrow at 5 p.m. PDT, so just around this time right now. Come back here. You'll see some more High School Star League action. Gangplank going to get locked in, though, instead of Yasuo. 
I mean, I don't think they'd expect, I mean, Yasuo to be a contested pick, but actually Gameplay wouldn't be a contested pick either. But Gameplay coming out anyways, we talked about him before this match, uh, well, before the day really, and Gameplay, even despite the nurse to him, he's just so strong. Right, and the zoning that he can offer with his barrels and the fact that later on in the game, sure, his barrels were nerfed just a little bit, but let's be honest here. If he gets one of those off and hits a massive crit on you, you're going to die in one shot. And Ash into a situation like this when you have a lot of people who can jump on you. A lot of people who can engage in a lot of sneaky ways. Somebody immobile like an Ash might hurt them. But at the same time, if they're able to get the positioning right, generate picks with the Enchanted Crystal Arrow, they can chain a lot of CC. The Rupture from the Trogath, the, uh, the Stun from the Anivia, even the Knockup from the Janna, Hidden OP in the pockets of Hawthorne. Let's yeah. see if they can pull it off. I mean, I think we're seeing a lot of... Uh mobility versus immobility here we have the Nivea pick we have the ash pick uh i mean Cho'Gath as well just fairly immobile champions and they're going up against the lee sin Callista, alistar that's got to be scary for them here so it looks like this last pick possibly the top or middle lane pick although i think gangplank is way more favored to go up into that top lane and I, I like the team com coming out from Irvine High School. Hawthorne is going to be interesting. I think it's a bit more of like the favorite champions that you know they're looking to pick up here, which is a pretty smart thing to do, I'd say, coming into you know, your first game of the High School Star League. Go for those comfort picks. But we are seeing a bit more of an actual composition here for Irvine High School. Right, definitely. And the Malphite or the Maokai, I feel like, are really good options, especially if you're sending this Gangplank mid. Because right now, on, turn, uh, on Irvine High School's team, they have pretty much all AD. You're not really relying on an Alistar to bring out tons of AP. There we go. We see the Malphite locked in. So having that kind of mixed damage in there is going to make it a lot, a lot harder for Hawthorne to itemize against. And especially since they don't have a true tank. Cho'Gath, I know a lot of people like to stack health on him, but the fact that you get free health from your ultimate really makes it kind of a waste of stat, like Roa's not the greatest idea. You're not going to have an Anivia building tank. You're not going to have a Kha'Zix building tank. So the fact that they have this like decent amount of mixed damage, and the fact that even though they're a little bit AD heavy, it's not going to hurt them. It's not going to hurt Irvine High School as much as if, if Hawthorne had like a dedicated tank line. Oh man, this should be an interesting game, I'd say. I, I mean, Irvine as well, they have four frontliners and one person in the back line is that Callista, but should have a pretty nice back line, back line to peel for that AD carry. But four members that really just want to get into the thick of the fight. Actually, maybe three members that want to get into the thick of the fight. Do they actually game lock those summoners? Pretty... Oh, okay, they changed them. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> you scared me as well there. So... Not gonna be seeing any of the uh, disco summoner spells, no uh, clairvoyance and uh, clarity. So, gonna be seeing the normal summoner spells coming up, guys. We're about to get into game number one of Hawthorne versus Irvine in this two game match for circuit points. We'll be right back after a quick break. The high school starting 2015 fall semester week one will continue right after this.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're here with Irvine High School versus Hawthorne High School in the High School Star League League of Legends 2015 Fall Semester. I'm Crusader, you can hear with Piscator. We're going to be your casters for the rest of this match and the last match of the day, actually, here for these two teams. But it's the first match for these teams of their uh, fall semester. And we'll see what they'll be going in with. So far, it looks like we're seeing a bit of grouping up from the side of Irvine. And Sun is right over in the bush next to them. And they're really relying on the face check here. Just hoping that Articuno just comes by, checks that bush. Because they don't really have reliable CC. Unless Credescent just elects to flash Pulverize in there. But unless Sun decides to walk on in the face check, I don't think there's a whole lot that they can do. Yeah, there's not a lot of luck. So I'm just going to be seeing you know, if they can catch somebody off here. I'd say most likely no. I mean, just face checking this push would actually make no sense. So, should just be seeing some uh, pretty passive early game starts here. Jungle camps coming down for both of these teams. Game playing in the middle lane should be interesting, but against, I mean, someone like Anivia, he should have quite a fun time here. I mean, Anivia, quite a squishy champion, and the poke coming off from game playing should be pretty rough to deal with. Yeah, and I wonder how these junglers are going to make their presence known in the mid lane, considering how well Anivia and Gangplank, 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 blah, 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 both scale later on in terms of the massive zoning and the AoE damage that they can do. Because once one of these guys gets snowballing, it could be a disaster for the opposing team. But we're going to see standard lanes here, 2v2s. We've only seen two games today, but all of them have seen standard lanes. I see some crazy lane swaps as the games go on and the season progresses, but for now, we'll keep it real. It's pretty interesting to see the barrel start, I'd say, coming out from uh, Flipsy on the gangplank. I mean, usually the early game barrels are pretty good to zone out the enemy top laner, or just enemy laner. It's from uh, getting over to that CS and trying to get it because they really fear that barrel damage harassed, but you can't... Uh, What's the word? You can't really zone out the Anivia because she's ranged. You so. gotta run up and you gotta uh, it. Yeah, however, though, gonna get level 2. I mean, getting that parley first is really important for stacking up to get that ultimate, uh, get those ultimate upgrades going into the late game. But now that he has the, uh, parley, he can really do some damage here with some harass. Right, and I anyway. think the early barrel was more of a reaction to the, uh, yeah. the death push that's better sitting up. A little bit yeah, of that's... gamble. Yeah, and the thing is, with landing against the Nivea, they can easily, you know, take out these barrels. Uh, if you let it up, if you if you leave it up for too long, they get that a little bit of extra gold from taking down those barrels. So, have to be thinking about those things. I mean, playing top lane game, playing against melee champions is kind of disgusting with how much you can zone somebody out, really. But I think playing against the range should be a little bit more difficult. Yeah, definitely. But given that Irvine high, you mentioned that. One of these players on behalf of Hawthorne is only level 29. It's this top lane in your couch oh, it's former. Also top couch former and the rest of the team definitely yep. lower range. Come on the top they lane. Up here. Oh, there's a flash down and there's a sonic wave to follow it up. Meanwhile, the bottom lane, best guard chomp is going to be coming in. Asimov will be taking a lot of damage. Nice nice pulverize coming in on the three, but they just jump in. Deal coming in. This is enough. Guard chomp flashes in. Ooh. He gets the first one. He gets pushed back into the tower and the double us are taken by Crudescent there. So four minutes in, that's the 1-1, one, one. and a uh, really nice play coming out from that Alice. That's really why you don't want to get too close to those towers. However, first blood does go over the Garchomp. So while the top lane gang was going down, we saw best Garchomp NA come in, secure the first blood. That's going to be absolutely crucial in Hearthstone's progression into this match because <clears throat> Kha'Zix one of those champions that you want to get snowballing early on. You want to try and get to that point where you can just one-shot the back lane carries, and if he continues... To play, to play the match like this would be absolutely awesome for them. If so, after that, I mean, just aggressive move coming out there from Best Guard Chomp and they, and we're gonna see what Kardashian can do here. Oh, he gets put out of the headbutt there. There's Sogum going on Napoleon. A lot of damage. Voices out the flash. The heal coming in here as well. I mean, double buffs on the Alice Star. That's a really nice thing to have him. To have for him, I mean, he can WQ quite a bit more as a cooldown reduction. Guard Chop and A is coming up to this top lane on to Valor here. Touch Homer trying to get oh, in onto the him. Does he have the Answer is no. 
The answer is no. And the answer is they're gonna find out if they're gonna survive another day. Yes, I really want to go in here and look at the look at the zoning coming out here from the Alistair. Double buff Alistair really is just a scary thing as I was saying. The WQ combos can just keep doing it and doesn't really have to worry about his mana costs, which are quite high on that combo, of course. Right, that's going to help them shove this lane out if they prioritize a little bit of vision from their jungler and their support towards his bot side river. It'll enable Callista and Alistar to play this lane a lot more aggressively because Callista early on has a bit of a hard time against Ash, considering that Ash can push a lot harder and Ash has that slowing effect that really messes up Callista a little bit. But hey, if you're able to shove in and kind of mitigate, mitigate that pushing from the opposing laners, then the lane just becomes a lot easier for you. As I'm out in Cardescent, moving away from that bottom lane for just a bit actually looks like they may have been moving up to middle lane, but actually just go back down to the bottom lane. A lot of pings going around that dragon there. Looks like uh, Hopping suspected a dragon take, but a uh, shot from Diddy Flamingo does you know, dispel those rumors here. So we're going to be seeing now right back into the lane, right back into the uh, CSing right here. We are seeing uh, in the middle lane flips. 49 to 41 here is a slight advantage for him. Same thing for Valor up against Couch Warmer in this top lane. Yeah, Irvine slowly pulling away in all their lanes. Obviously, 9TS isn't the world's difference, but considering how early on this 9TS lead has manifested itself, or really translate into when they can take their back timings. If they take back timings at awkward times, they're gonna have a disparity in their item spike. So Irvine setting themselves up well for their very powerful mid game that they have, a very powerful skirmishing composition that this team Sheen offers. First. Sheen first from flips. That just, that, that's absolutely brutal. He double the barrels into the Sheen, the Sheen up Harley. A lot of damage there and We'll be seeing uh, Sun probably feeling a lot of pain here. He's just building up for that mana as the is do. Once again, Tier the God is stacking and just won't be having any armor to uh, combat against this massive damage that will be coming out of Flips very soon here. Level 6 is hit by Flips, of flips as well, so we'll have that uh, extra pressure around the map. And we can see the trading start up here in this middle lane. Right, Sun definitely wants to treat it more as a farm lane, given that with the uh, decreased mana pool that you don't really have that much mana until you get that tier stacked up until you get all those mana items that you need so Flip's definitely going to try and quell that Articuna from farming just as much as they can. But the more aggression that they can put on this Nivea early on the better because later on in the game which you can just have that Arctic Storm on forever it really affects the way they play team fights. but right now they got spotted out Lee Sin got spotted out they were, did not know that there was a war there so they're waiting for this gank and it looks like the rest of them are going to collapse in from the bot side a lot of members here in this middle lane and looks like though they won't be able to get this gank down and actually have to move back over to the lane shouldn't be too much loss there because of that but not able to get that gank potential gank off red six as well moving in to go for some deep wards here but I mean, we are seeing Irvine trying to take the initiative in this game, trying to go for these aggressive plays around the map. Just haven't really been able to make them happen. Top lane slowly turning into a Malphite that's saying, you know what? You're never gonna kill me. Came back with the Spectre's Cal. Me and Malcho got still sitting on that Doran's ring. Looks like we're gonna see our first wheel back coming out of Irvine High. That lane shoved out. The jungler actually gets called bot side. Help them shove out as well. Let's see if they apply pressure top, knowing that that Cossacks is down there. Yeah, it looks like Leeson has been spending a little bit more farming. So, much more slow pace compared to the last games uh, that we saw today, of course. There's some pretty aggressive plays coming out of Olympus. And this game, obviously, these teams are starting to just kind of feel each other out for this first game. In fact, as we can see, Kalista, of course, going with that Blade of the Rune King. We do have uh, some pretty typical item buys coming out from everyone else here as well. Leeson though. Yeah, Just six months to come up. Let me jump again here. Couch Warmer forced to flash away. Gonna be able to land Ooh. the kick and wow. Maybe not the prettiest, but it was still effective. And calmly able to pick up that kill there. The game clicking ultimate came down just in time to get an assist for himself. So some gold going over across the map there with that kill. I mean, that was pretty much the only way Lee Sin was going to get that kill. Red Six already used the safe card to kind of hop over and get the slowdown. So the only real option, even though he was a little far away, is to kick him into the wall, and that was perfect. 
And both Cobra on that bottom lane. Exhaust gets pushed out. And the Fates Call as well as the Jenny Flamingo. The Monsoon, that may have not been the best. However, he's able to flash under the wall, but he just wanted to go once, and that when Asimov gets the kill, Gradesson stuck up in the tower as well. He has to get himself out of it. He's taking so much damage. Tower Who's shots will not be enough to pick up the kill, but Asimov, he's so low, wow. and Napoleon gets up the kill. Gameplay is here as well. He just takes down the shield, and this Janna will be able to survive for now. One of those situations where you kind of take what you got from it, and you just run away with the money. I mean, they kind of got away with robbery there, considering how aggressive they were playing under that tower. Once you get that, once you both survive, and you have a mid laner coming in to kind of assure you of a safe exit, you should just say, you know what? That's fine. We got what we came for. But now you end up giving over an extra 150 gold to Ash. Luckily, she didn't have time to spend it right away, because I believe she was already on her way out of lane when the uh, Janna got the kill. But at the same time, why put more gold into the other team's pocket than you need to? Yeah, for sure. A little bit of overextension there, trying to stay in for that extra kill. And uh, definitely paid for it there. So, with that, it's going to be 2 to 3 here. Gold is fairly close, just you know, 11 minutes, 11 and a half minutes in here. I mean, you can already see gameplay not having quite the effect onto Sun here. Has the uh, Callus of the Protector to build up, but actually, B members might just be enough to take down the Cinevia, flash over the wall. Red Six is able to follow the run right into a Sun. Still trying to move in here though. Doesn't quite have the kick up and actually just throwing down the into the egg form. And they should be able to pick up the chunk. So there's the egg right into the parlay. Alley oop right there. Flips is able to pick up that kill. <laughs> he yeah, they're the playing egg. some soccer right there. Oh my goodness. But that was actually really smart. Right when Sun was trying to flash over the Raptor wall, Breadsticks held on to the second part of his Q, his resonating. He's doing strike. that quite a bit. He's really smart about holding on to these cues, I see. And that in itself helped them lock down that kill onto Sun. They were able to get that extra damage. They were able to get that chase down. So patience definitely coming out of this Elise in player. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I mean, he's a monk, so he has to practice it quite a bit. <laughs> I see what you did. Oh, I see what you did there, but I don't think Lee Sin did. Hey, that's, that's not cool. Well. What's he gonna do? Find me? <laughs> oh man. Alright. So. So far in this game here, we do see some more advantages going over to Irvine. I mean, they're just trying to make these aggressive plays, and it's really important with the team that they have. So many opportunities to just jump onto someone, throw down the CC, and we've seen them rotate right over to the middle lane once again. It's been a pretty constant thing that they like to do. Push bot, shove it up, move up into the uh, upper half of the river. Nash is moving right back down to the bottom lane, though. However, oh, I mean, we can just see them just really trying to get that roam going. And Sun still stacking on lane, no real damage. Lips These guys are starting to hurt a lot. Lips has actually not even back in. Whoa! Valor coming out of nowhere. Asimov gets the kill. Best guard chop tries to go up, but instead runs into the entire team of Irvine. Flips with another kill. He has 3,100 gold that he's sitting on right now. Typical gameplay. And now with five members in middle, it'll just be an easy push for Irvine. Yeah, SKT T1 Valor managed to take the time to jump out that lane. Chow got slowly pushing in the top side, but they were able to make that play happen in the mid lane. And now getting this tower down early is going to really inhibit Anivia's ability to farm. Save the TP. That way they can go back, save the top lane tower. But now look what they're going to do. They're going to take this dragon. Nobody in terms of significant damage dealers are around. So this is a free dragon for Irvine High. They're gonna get this snowball rolling even quicker. Yeah, Irvine looks like they're having some really smart plays right now. You know what I mean? Uh, trying to be present around the map with the entire team, going for, you know, the a lot of pressure on this middle lane, especially with just people roaming in there, trying to get these kills. Pick up the tower, pick up the dragon. Very well done by them. And Trinity Force, Picked up here by Flips on Gangplank, 14 minutes in, he has 1300 gold to spare, so he finishes up those cooldown boots. Typical Gangplank build, typical time for it to come up as well. Gangplank, especially when you get the Sheen down, farming up these creep waves is just so easy. He's one of these, he, like, he snowballs off of farming because he gets so much extra gold. It's ridiculous for Gangplank here. Who and, uh, see that coming in. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's just, it's just... This is so amplified for game plan here. You see him going in onto Sun here. So they come out with the barrels. He doesn't even need them to pick up this kill. So much damage. And he just lets the Ignite finish, his up, finish it up. 
Red Six coming in onto the middle, uh, onto the top lane. Cal Chwarmer is able to flash out, and I just really remember flips. Not going top lane, uh, going middle lane. Is he able to pick up Ignite? Oh, Red Six might get caught here. Nah, kill pressure coming out. This is so good. Yeah, Red Six sitting in here in this middle lane, or uh, in the middle of the river, I should say. And the Scar Chomp is around, trying to steal away this uh, Skeletal Crab if he can. But Flips is here, and they actually want to engage onto this one. He can't get over the wall, and actually uses a lot of trouble. Red Six picks up the kill. Couch oh, Warmer coming in here. Flips able to get a lot of damage down, and that's a double kill coming in for Breadsticks. And this lead is starting to get a little bit out of hand. Irvine High School finding the picks they need. And it's a really brutal team here. They just really punish you for overextending, for going for fights where you shouldn't be. And uh, a lot of damage coming out from them. A lot of kills going over. And a lot of gold in the pockets of uh, Irvine High School now. Yeah, at over 5,000 gold. That's 16 minutes into the game. Breadsticks, there's a lot of credit to be given to this Lee Sin right now. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times it's easier to say Lee Sin, somebody who plays aggressively. You have to be active in the early game. It's easier said than done, though, because it's scary to be that aggressive early on. But what is he doing? He's counter jungling. He's putting vision down in these crucial choke points, realizing that best guard chomp, unless he gets to jump on him, he's probably not going to kill him straight up. So he's calling his teammates over, making great rotations, and now this bot lane is under fire. Valor has just been all over the map. From top lane to bottom lane, he is moving as fast as he can here. He's really getting all over the map. The Mia Ping's just now going down. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I haven't seen Chogath in a while. Where is he? He's gonna be down in this bottom lane here with the rest of Hawthorne. And actually, while they're all down in bottom lane, the middle lane push is coming out from Flips. And he just pushes that lane down so fast. Has a Brutalizer now. And he's gonna be taking down this middle lane tower. And Flips actually though, he's gonna get caught off. The log damage coming down. He's throws down the other oh. flashes over the wall. It looks like he's able to escape throwing down the barrels, trying to escape here. So much damage from that one barrel, and that will cause Guard Chomp to get out of there. Meanwhile though, stunned down the valley, gets caught by the arrow. Here comes the least in Red Six wants to make some plays. The kick will be coming in here. Dirty Flamingo is in the back lines. Sure, Chris Possession is trying to get over to him. Gameplay's gonna be rejoining the fight here, catches off stun, that's it going down. Three members of Hopper going out separately. That's a double kill coming in. And that's just four members down for Hopper. And Irvine High School pick up the team fight win there. And they get an easy tower in this bottom lane. Fearless precision from Irvine High. They know exactly how much damage they do, they know exactly how much they can tank. Fury Destin did a great job holding on to that Unbreakable Will until the last possible moment in order to throw off the other team. And I was going to say, while that was all happening in the mid lane, while Flips was doing his own little mid split push thing, I was going to say, even if he goes down here, it's going to be totally worth it given the long-term effects that losing a mid-tier 2 can have. But what did he do? He made it over the wall. He flashed just in time for them to... For the rest of his team to mop up or start that chaotic team fight that really put Irvine even further further ahead in this already snowball -y match. They're not exactly sure if they want to die this, but you know what? They're just going to go for it anyway. We may have lost Crusader. Oh. Just, oh, there he is. Life muted. I wish uh, Twitch chat would tell me that. <laughs> Life is muted. I'm sabotaging him all the way from Southern California. Yep. We are going to be seeing, though, I mean, after that fight there, easy pickings. Uh, Irvine just ran right past that tower onto the enemy champions, picked up the kills. And we are now going to be seeing the siege over on this top lane. Napoleon runs right into the gangplank. Monsoon coming out to try and get away. The wall going to be coming in. But oh, look at the engage! Right out from under the brush. A double kill for Red Six, just like that. As the unstoppable force came in with all the other dashes for the engage. And now two members down. Red Six, he wants to go in. Nope, he doesn't. <laughs> fast war jump there. Showing he has got, he's got those fast fingers right there. 
And here comes the sat tower push. The wave clear coming out is just so strong. Pushing it on to the two towers now. Yeah, luckily, they do have a choke out that's able to zone them out just a little bit. But now that Anivia is up, now that Ash is up, they're going to have to... Irvine High is going to have to be a little bit more careful in really deciding how far they want to push. Then again, they're absolutely clear. Look at them go in. Yeah, look at them go. Couch one. We're going to get low in the back line. Here's the cannon barrage coming now. May have not been the most effective one, but Sun can get about five of those barrels. That's going to come in. Back line. Wait, they're so low. They may be able to pick up some kills. Your friend six is low. Asimov does find a kill. Valor trying to get onto somebody here, but they're just hiding themselves away. Look at the range on these guys. They're able to the land on the flips. But he has the oranges to try to keep himself alive. He gets knocked up by the rupture, and that is gonna be the shutdown. It goes over to Dirty Flamingo. Rick Destin does such a good job of baiting team fights and drawing people away from his carries. Holding on to that unbreakable will to the last possible second after all the uh, mispositioning has been done. And then he pops in, then you realize, you know what? I can't really kill this guy with his 70% damage reduction. By that time, Irvine High managed to position themselves in a much more advantageous situation and do a lot of damage in situation. I mean, they were off fresh respawns, and Irvine was. They were staggered by like two respawns at least. So that's two respawns and two backs worth of buys and healing that they weren't able to do. But even still, they managed to get an inhibitor tower off of that. All right, so Dragon's alive. Red Six is going to be starting it up here. And look at this. I mean, such a domin dominating lead right now. 13,000 gold, six towers, going to be two dragons after this one here. And now... We are going to be seeing this uh, middle lane push coming out here from Flips. Look at the damage coming out for him. Actually built into the Eyes and just goes to the Infinity Edge. Now he's really trying to bully out Sun from this lane. He's going to get caught by the tail end of that Rupture. It does slow oh, no. down. W, but he's going to be trapped in here. He will be taken down. Here comes the... Uh, the he got the hammer Barrage down before he went down, though. And now the damage will be coming in for the rest of his team. Tradestin is thrown right back into the middle of the enemies. And he knocks back Sun into, into his own team. This will be the kills going down. Three members down so far. The rest of Hawthorne are just on the run back into their base. This will be the inhibitor in the middle lane going down. Sacrifice leading to profit for Irvine High School. They tunneled so hard on flips there. They completely disrespected the fact that, you know what? Callista also has seven kills. She has a fork and a rune on. She's really strong. But look at this. They're diving. They don't even care. Yep, and we do have damage coming down. Best guard I'm trying to get out of here. But here comes Breadsticks right into him. He picks up the kill. Kyle Schwarmer, the only one left to defend this up. one. But this should be the end of the game here. As his Nexus Tower starting to take some damage. Or oh, maybe not. They have to back away. Sun's kind of jump in here. Trying to get the damage down. He sends up Valor. Pretty Flamingo as well. Putting out the damage. And Sun does pick up that kill. Breadstick's going to be jumping away as Kudestin also looks to exit. And that's a fight that they barely just managed to scrape themselves through. And that's having Gangplank off the table. But we were just completely aware of the fact that if Flips is in any of these fights, those barrels are going to chunk out everybody who's not building a ton of armor. And given that they're 13, 14,000 in gold behind, nobody's building any armor whatsoever. We have Sun still trying to barely scrape by, building up that mana pool with the Roa and the Tear. Meanwhile, Flips, they're looking to kill him. Oh, yep, yeah, Flips, he's pretty cut out here. And I don't think he can get himself out. Flashes after using that ultimate, looking Whoa. to get away. Oh! He may be able to Dude. get the kill on the oh, best card job, even through the shield. Invisible, he knew where he was. He will be taken down. The feast comes through. Valor now going to be teleporting in here. Doesn't have the ultimate up right now and is actually going to be having to run away. Three members are low, though. And he may just want to keep the special the going. Let me chase him right back into their base. <laughs> the slowest pinch ever. Yeah. <laughs> Valor can't quite get in there. Neither can Crudescent. But the rest of the team is going to be coming to push down in the base. I mean, Credescent, I mean, rather, Valor played it like he had a lot more people coming in a lot sooner. And look at how much respect that Hawthorne was showing Irvine High in that situation. They were 4v1 against the Malphite. If they managed to play well, they could have killed him. But at the same time, they were like, all right, this Malphite, there's no way he TP'd for no reason, right? They, there has to be people with him.
But the fact of the matter is, Red Sticks was all the way back in base. Asimo and Kredesin stopped for cookies along the way, so they were really far away as well. But the fact that they're so far behind and the history of this game is really making their decisions a lot more conservative and a lot more scared. I'd be scared too of these pirates. Oh, look at that. They're going to be running right back into the bush where everyone is. You're going to be throwing back the tank though. College for Murray looks like he will be taking down Asimov with the kill. Meanwhile, Valor went right into that back line. Ooh. Here comes the cannon barrage. Oh, the monster actually stopped stressing as well as the arrow. But he should still be able to get into the fight with the rest of his team as that's two members down for Hawthorne. Irvine High School look to continue pushing in here. Dudu Flamingo is on the run, trying to get himself away here. Barrels are going to be thrown down. Five flips here. He just chases him down. That's the parley to pick up the kill. Sun under the tower will be chased down as well. And Breadsticks does pick up that kill. That's four members down. And we have an inhibitor down, but there's not too much that everybody can do just yet. They have to get those minions pushing into the base. I mean, at the very least, it gives them an opportunity to get these other waves shoving out. Right now, top wave actually shoving in favor of Hawthorne. Navi is up in 20 seconds, so actually a lot of the wave clear is gone. They might just go for the game here. Yeah, they're going to be taking down this first Nexus Tower. Quite easily here. And look at the poke coming oh, off from flips. They just want to go for the engage right the now. Here comes best guard shot from the side. However, he gets caught out there, and the Lee Sin combo comes through to pick up the kill. This is surely the game here, as the last Nexus Tower is going to fall. Some last minute kills are going to be coming in here. Flips trying to pick someone, some up for himself. Oh, do it! <laughs> Nexus is going to go down here though. This is going to be Irvine High School picking up game number one of this two game match. Or is it? As actually, Flips is going to fall. Cardestin's still alive, and then it will just be the surrender vote to finish this one off. Hopter knows they're going to be losing out in this game. So, game number one does go over to Irvine High School. We'll see if Hopping can, can bring it back for game number two. Right, Irvine High started off so strong, Lee Sin getting the ganks that he needed, in addition to Kredesin making absolutely huge plays, not just in the head, but pulverizes, but the fact that the Alistar was able to divert attention away from the main targets, and just bait them with the unbreakable wall at the end to say, Haha, I'm not really gonna die, I'm an Alistar, my ultimate's way too powerful. Yep, so, well played game coming in from both of those two teams, we're gonna be going back uh, to a quick break before we get into the next game, guys. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with game number two of this best or of this match.
Hey guys, welcome back. We're getting into our last game of the night. It is going to be Irvine High School versus Hawthorne High School game number two in the high school style, like 2015 fall semester week one. I'm Chris Edikin here with Piscator. Going to be your casters uh, for this last game. Of course, the action doesn't end here after tonight. We will be having streams every week for Dota 2, StarCraft 2, Hearthstone, and League of Legends. And tomorrow we'll be having some League of Legends as well at 5 p.m. PDT. So come over and check out those games then. Are those video games too? Yes, yes they are. <laughs> so we're really going to be banned out here. It looks like maybe seeing another IHS ban coming out from Irvine. And game playing already taken away from Flips here. I mean, the last game is just pretty big. I mean, the fact that Flips was able to do that much damage against the opposing Anivia for so long. Sun never got to a point where he was able to really do anything with the Anivia. They were just constantly shoved in. There's way too much pressure coming out of the opposing jungler. So hopefully this game, Hawthorne can find a way to get their lanes rolling a little bit quicker and not fall behind as early because Irvine just ran away with that. Right, so we're going to be seeing, uh, yeah, it looks like the IHS man, they're going to be coming back here. Aurelia Hecker and Singe this time. Last time it was like Aurelia Heimerdinger. We saw like the Gnar come out, the Scion, yeah. So, I mean, they really just don't like Aurelia, which is obvious. I mean, there's a lot of good reasons not to like Aurelia. Once she gets snowballing, or even like if you yeah. shut her down early, once she gets items, it's like, what are you going to do against her? She's just going to jump on you, stun you, and then make your life miserable. Gangplank uh, obviously has to be banned out here, as well as that Kalista. Last one is Alistair, so a lot of targeted bans out there, and we'll see how uh, the side of Irvine High School responds to this. This does, leave Le this does leave Lee Sin open, however, and considering how much early game pressure that Breadsticks was able to put out, I wouldn't be surprised if they picked this up early. But then again, they actually elect to go for the Lucian here. Interesting. I feel like there's so many other more priority picks you could have gone for. And especially considering yeah. Lucian isn't really a top priority ADC in the current meta or the state of the game. It's a little confusing. Yeah, you know. We are seeing the uh, hovers over on the Garen. Actually going to be locked in. You hover over on the Skarner. Not to sure how that champion has been doing since his uh, past rework. But if it does get locked in, we'll be in for a very, very, very... Interesting game, but Garen is going to be locked in here. Pretty popular champion. We did see it earlier today. And we'll see uh, how much Demacian Justice will be laid down. Maybe it'll be a lot. Maybe it'll be a little to none. Um, i trying to think of, like, on a scale of police forces, how much Demacian Justice do you predict will be laid down this game? I would say... How much justice will there be? How much, like, on a scale of anything, actually, just how much, what has a lot of justice? What has a little justice? What has a lot of justice? Have you ever had a bacon-covered brownie? I don't know why a that's the first thing that came to my... No, no, you wrap a brownie in bacon and you eat it. It's like the best dessert ever. <laughs> You've never had... Okay, anyway. <laughs> but this Garner pick kind of worries me. Right, going I back to the game of League of Legends instead now. of talking I mean, about I regret mean, I mean, going off on that tangent. We do have the uh, Skarner pick coming in here, and honestly, I've not seen this champion at all since his rework. I have no idea how soon they're going to be going. Okay, I think when they pick up Skarner here, they're pretty much daring Breadsticks to pick an early early game pressure jungler, like the Jin Zhao, or even the Lee Sin. Skarner is very powerful nowadays, considering that he can stun on his E, and the neutral objective pressure that he puts on if they manage to capture those Spires. But then again, one of his weaknesses is early game dueling. Unless he's up against somebody who kind of doesn't have that early game burst damage, like a Gragas, for example, he can suffer. But seeing Gragas come out in a situation where I feel like Lee Sin could do so much work is really curious. And we are going to see, I mean, just really interesting champions. I think Leona, though, has been a you know, really popular engaged champion. Looks like maybe a Skarner and a, a Thresh in response to it. And what's really interesting with this team is that there's a lot of ways they can just get you into that back line. Thresh hooks you in, Skarner drags you in, and then they're going to have the, you know, Garen to lay down the Justice. If they're able to get that combo off, Siv are going to be up here as well. And I think that kind of helps out with that team comp as well. I mean, Skarner can rush in there, rush out uh, with the uh, with the Siver ultimate. But quick picks coming out from Irvine High School. They know what they want. 
and they are just locking him in right away. Azir and Riven, and the last pick is going to be the Oriana. Okay, now seeing this Oriana pick, I feel like Skarner and Garen make a little bit more sense. You can spoot everybody up with the on the hunt from Sivir. Yeah. You can throw the ball onto one of these people, speed them up even more. Yeah. But then again, at the same time, there's so many ways for Irvine High School to disengage this. They have the Leona Solar Flare, they can zone them out, they have the exploding cast. Even Riven can just Q, 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 Q. All of a sudden, she's like halfway <laughs> across the map. I think the Riven versus uh, Garen top lane matchup should be pretty interesting. I mean, it's, it's not what you see too often. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's really what it is. <laughs> um, Lucian, ver Lucian and uh, Leona is kind of a classic thing I've seen like a few times. Like, it just like somehow they keep coming up repeatedly for me, where I see these two champions together, and it's a very really interesting comp coming in. It's like the solo Q Riven player, and then we have a little bit of cohesion between I think the rest of the team. I mean, Azir Gragas should be a pretty strong combo as well as Leona, but we'll have to see what happens when we get into game. Yeah, this is a massive amount of damage that comes out in the mid game from Irvine High. And additionally, like you touched on how this bot lane is like kind of a classic that comes out on occasion. Their level two is absolutely nasty, especially if they manage to hit it first against Sivir and Thresh. I mean, Sivir Thresh probably not going to kill you in a straight up 2v2. But if they're able to get that uh, Zenith Blade onto the Sivir and she doesn't manage to uh, spell shield that in time, they can proc that Sunlight passive over and over again. And the double shot Light Slinger coming out from the Lucian. It's going to be absolutely punishing. Yeah, for sure. We'll see what happens when we get on into the game. The guys, it is game number two. Irvine High School so far up one to nothing over Hotham. And we'll see if Hotham can bring it back for one to one or if Irvine will just close out the night two and zero. We'll be right back after a quick break, so don't go anywhere.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're getting into game number two of Irvine High School versus Hawthorne High School. So far, Irvine is up one to nothing and should be an exciting game for the second one. I hope you say you can here with Piscator. And we do have the two Project Skins, Project Lucian and Leona. So that would explain why they picked these two champions. So they could have that Project Skin synergy. It was never about the synergy. It was never about the high damage lane. It was never that about the increased kill pressure. It's about the matching skins. It's pretty important. Oh yeah, when I do it, when, my, when I play Leona, I'm always like, all right, we gotta play pool party Leona and pool party Graves, and then pool party Lee Sin, Renekton, and Lee Sin. Yeah. So Skarner now up here. I'm honestly not really sure how these uh these new things around the map will work, and I wonder if the teams know how they work either because. Well, neat, man. well, to break it down, it's pretty much like playing Dominion on Summoner's Rift. Oh, wow. Every once in a while, you're able to capture these points. If you capture them on behalf of your team, if you're Skarner, while you're inside this area, you have greatly increased move speed, greatly increased attack speed, and greatly increased mana regeneration. This makes your early clears ridiculously fast. This makes your jungle sustain ridiculously good. And especially when you're contesting Baron and Dragon, since there are spires around those What's objectives going? as well. Why is the so circle hard. getting smaller? What's going it's on, Dad? Cool oh! Couch warmer. You're getting caught out here. It's a cooldown. It's a cooldown. So now that the circle has shrunk all the way back down, it is able to be recaptured again. That way you don't just like stand on top of it like blue team, red team just like jumps back and forth. There you go. As you see the circle expire, you're going to see that blue team... Irvine so High is able to capture this. So the capturing it purely just to like not allow Skarnet to do anything? Pretty much, yeah, and you get a little bit of gold from it as well. Oh, interesting. What the heck? <laughs> oh yeah, it makes Skarnet real strong in the early game, that's for sure. Uh, I see, I see. So basically, you don't want to invade when these things are up. If you're, uh... Invading a Skarnet, unless you're somebody like an Elise or a Lee Sin, somebody with a lot of front row burst as a jungler. Invading a Skarner is usually not the best idea, and they're going to start blue to give them even more mana regen and CDR. Even so this hard leash, too. So this thing's going to last until he exits, I'm guessing? So this buff lasts whenever you're inside the uh, little cone of the Spire. So as long as you're in that zone, it doesn't expire unless somebody... Oh, so since, so since they captured it, it'll stay up until... Exactly. It doesn't yeah, expire. Right. Wow. Interesting. Today I learned. It's well, really powerful. It's really annoying. You want to capture them for yourself all the time. I see, I see. So, well, we do have, I mean, I think it's a pretty typical start here for Woody seven captured. Three at least for the uh, team of Irvine here. So, if you're going over, you know, since that lesson is over, Hawthorne High School, I mean, picking up this Skarner has to be really interesting that to him. I sh we probably should have looked up if he was experienced with this champion. I, I really hope he'd be if he's playing it right now but I mean obviously they knew what to do with these uh with the points we're able to capture them and so were the uh, side of Irvine High School just getting the basic ones down but we'll see how this champion has an effect on into the game I mean it's been slightly reworked obviously and it's in a comp where it seems like you know, they've been kind of uh, setting it up for it to have some synergy with the impale it's going to bring someone back that they can also um, use your own abilities to catch down, lock down, someone take, pick up the kills. Speaking of lock down, this bottom lane, a lot of harass coming in. Azimuth and Kredestin looking to have this bottom lane on lockdown. Then again, at the same time, while it does have synergy with the Sivir ultimate, it's really telegraphed when you're trying to impale somebody as Gunner. Because you see this giant, scary scorpion, scorpion running towards you? Like, he's not running at you to give you a hug, he's running at you to stick up. Oh. Bottom lane, we are seeing some fights as well as inside of the river, actually. Best guard jump, he's inside of one of those points, and look at the movement speed he has, but he will just be taken down for the first blood. Flips was able to get in there for some help. Sun's gonna be coming in, he's trying to get onto breadsticks. So is Couch Woman, they're trying to get the pinch on here. Can they get the kills? Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Heal's gonna be coming in. Gradessa gonna be going back in, though, and he take out Dirty the Flamingo. Napoleon trying to get himself away, but that will just be two kills going over to that bottom lane and an explosive really start here 3-0 though coming in for Irvine so yeah Skarner's strong but he's not that strong when you're up against an Azir and the opposing jungler with all that CC available you're not gonna really come out of that situation unscathed or even relatively victorious 
And then we talked about so much in the pregame about how much skill pressure this Leona and Lucian has. We saw it right there. She jumps on, she pops the shield so that she takes so much less damage, and the sunlight passive that gets procced over and over again. Lucian synergizes with that so well, considering how fast he can get those attacks out. Top lane, we are seeing this ribbon. It looks like has a bit of a leg up on Garen here. Uh, 18 to 12 in the CS. Just a slight difference, but I think. Oh, look at the damage coming out from that ribbon. Is the real difference right now. Forces the flash out of the uh, Couch Homer right there. And middle, I mean, no, bottom lane is where we're seeing the real CS difference. Asimov, 36 to 18 on Dirty Flamingo. It's tough. Generally, a lot of people say Sivir wins the Lucian versus Sivir matchup, given the fact that she can spell shield. But given that you have a Liana, you really have to be very selective in how you manage to use that spell shield. Because if you spell shield a piercing light, then all of a sudden she can see the blade onto you. But meanwhile, in the top lane, I don't think that's going to lead to anything. Garner really suffers when they don't have a laner that can offer CC as well. And Garen, you know, doesn't really do anything to CC. He can, like, jump on you and silence you. But in terms of hard CC, he doesn't really offer any. So, it's going to have to really good follow up. As well. <laughs> Gank ganking the Riven as well is pretty difficult. A little bit. The CC. I mean, not the CC. Well, I, mean, I guess the sun, but the dashes and the mobility is really... What is the factor there, but... Patron looks like he may want to be fighting back here against Valor. Get these trades down, and once again, the pink's coming in, best guard chomp, and they really want to get a gank down onto this top lane. Not yet level 6, though, and they really just don't have too much CC going up against that Riven to take him down. All right, especially considering that guard chomp elected to go chill, uh, not go chilling spike. Oh, ultimate popped right away from Valor as he levels up. Throws out the wind slash. Not the most effective ultimate there, I don't think. Garen's just going to hang back a little bit, heal that all up. Yeah. What I was saying is, like, early on, you really want to take advantage of something like a Chilling Smite because you get the slow from the Chilling Smite, you get the slow from your Fracture, and then you're able to proc your stun with an auto attack. But if you're electing to go Ranger's Trailblazer, and that's something Skarner doesn't really need. He has really good sustain in the jungle, so I don't really see a reason why Garchomp would build the Purple Smite over Blue or even Red. But at the same time, it does offer increased clear speed. It makes you a lot healthier coming out of the jungle, but if you don't take advantage, the fact that Skarner can gank really, really hard, especially with follow-up. Like, Thresh has a lot of gank follow-up or a lot of gank initiation, but they're not taking that... They're not using that advantage, especially considering that Azimuth and Kiridescent have been shoving so much and playing so aggressively. This bot lane is pretty much waving a flag saying, Hey, hey, gank me! Gank me! I'm shoved! Okay, we're gonna be seeing top lane trades here once again. And actually, bottom lane, maybe be seeing again coming out. Bread Six is winning in the sides here, Azimov. And Crudescent should be poised here. Yeah, unfortunately, this lane is going to shove in favor of Irvine, especially after Azimov takes, uh, takes out those last few casters. So they're going to have to back up out of there. They're not really going to want it to get into a real 3v3. I mean, why give up kills even if you come out ahead? If you can get away from something scot free. Oh man, this top lane, there's a lot of harass going down in the couch moment here. The directed camera really love to watch this, and Valor is just really bullying him out here. As you can see, CS lead has been pushed up to 20. And the bottom has been pushed up to 30. Flash Whoa. again with the ultimate back up. There is going to be a kill there with that last auto attack. Valor does take down Couch Warmer. It's a lack of respect coming out from Couch Warmer right there. Like, you know a Riven can do that. You know Rivens like to do that. I mean, everybody wants to be box box and make those plays. Oh, oh, the flash! flash. Oh, the Ember survived! Does it come out? What? Oh, I've made a huge mistake is what he's saying right now. Oh, alternate that he dashes, he flashes in, but does not throw down the Emperor's divide. Bottom lane, though, Zenith play gonna be coming in. They're the Soul Flare as well. That's a lot of damage. The flash from Azimov. They flash over the Kudestin. That's gonna hit up by the hook. But oh, over the wall. Look at that. It's gonna be this fire. Throws out the impale. Exhaust will be coming down here. They're still trying to go in. Teleport will be coming in, though. Here comes Valley. He wants to go in under this tower. They will be backing out. The rest of his teammates are low. And a really aggressive trade down in that bottom lane. So many summoners being burned as a result of that. We won't see any kills from it. Luckily, now that they have all this presence down bot, Caltrum are going to realize that, you know what, this lane is pretty much free, but actually electing to roam downwards. 
are just going down to ward, but it looks like they're going to set up for this dragon right now. If you don't okay. manage to get the kills, you might as well take something and let it looking to do that. Yeah, but it looks like we may see some resistance coming out of the side of Hawthorne High School. They had to uh, top it and teleport down, and they want to contest this dragon pick. Azimuth is low, and Dirty Flamingo was able to go back, so that could be huge here. As they have a full health AD carry inside of Hawthorne, but they're taking a lot of poke. Valor gets over the wall. They catch all two by himself. Here's him for the Napoleon does get caught up by himself. And there will be Couch from her falling as well. He's not able to get to Azimuth to take him down. And that was really disastrous there. A double kill going over to Azimuth. And two members of Hawthorne being completely cut off when there was a, a possibly a good fight for them coming up. But just. We're not in the right place, he's really out of position. So, Dragon will be going down for Irvine. Indecision causing Hawthorne that Dragon, that objective, and that fight right there. When they have something like a Leona, Gragas, Azir, Lucian, and a Riven, you want to be the ones kind of choosing your fights, choosing exactly when, yo, we're going to throw down right now. If you let Irvine High's team comp force the issue every time, there's just no way you can react with an immobile team comp like the one you have on behalf of Hawthorne they're able to maybe generate a pick like you said many people on Irvine especially the ADC the low range 500 range ADC of Lucian was so low in that regard the so Oriana rotates over they make a little bit more of a group decision on how to take that fight that probably would have gone way better for Hawthorne so Sun is gonna be taking some damage here and bottom lane we do have Dirty Flamingo is pushing up on this tower but it's the advantage is going over to Irvine right now 6-0 to zero. have let nothing slip so far in this game no deaths no towers down they have uh, the first dragon as well and really I'm just trying to play the slow and dominating game here the uh, Skarner I mean in that bottom lane that was the time to make that big play Skarner flashing into that bottom lane with the impale but not being able to get a kill from that is pretty Upsetting, I'd say. And he's definitely way, he's really falling behind uh, Red Sticks right now. Yeah, even though he is even on farm, the fact that he has zero pre roll participation is because, you know, well, his team has he zero has 2, kills. 2,000 gold his right team now. Has zero kills. He has 2,000 gold in the bank right now. He has the second most gold on his team. I don't think that's what you want to happen. <laughs> yeah, as a jungler, you're generally only, uh, you're like ahead of the sport a lot of times and that's it. Yeah, so not looking too good here for Hawthorne in the second game. But at the same time, they do have tools to come back. They have really good yeah. potential if they're able to get vision down and get to these objectives way ahead of time. I mean, the green war lasts three minutes. And you know oh, middle up. lane. Sun forced the flash away. Those are the shots move, actually. They're under the tower. He can't get the kill, though. Flips is still under the tower range. And actually, oh my God. Sun with the kill. What a huge play coming out from him, almost picking himself up a double kill there. Gets a fresh blue buff on top of that, as if insult. I mean, adding insult to injury there. Just oh, handing solo over player on Napoleon. Azimuth gets another kill, and that was a quick one there. But that was the first death in that middle, and that was the first death for Irvine, and that was a pretty great play coming out from Sun. So a little bit of gold in the pocket of Hawthorne. And that's a good person to give it to. Oriana, definitely one of the best scaling champions, or if not the best scaling champion on behalf of Hawthorne. So the quicker they can get her there, the better. She does have the Athens available, so she's going to be able to add a lot of utility to their team fights. Sure, she's not going to have a lot of damage behind it, but the fact that she's going to be constantly able to spam slow shields and have those shockwaves up quicker is going to be very useful. That bottom lane, though, is really just continuing to, uh, to snowball here. Azimuth and Crudescent. Pretty ahead of their opponents here. 4 0 and 1 on Azimov. Looking at what the gold counts actually. That would be 5,000, almost 200 to 35. So that's like, I don't know, 1,000, 1,500 plus gold advantage over for, uh, for Azimov right here. I mean, he's pretty much a BF sword ahead of Dirty Flamingo right now. And you can even see, like, if you look over at the map, you look over at the Skarner. At the uh, Skarner. I'm not, I'm not even sure what they're called, but. The point? The Spires. You can see that the side of Hawthorne is really just owning pretty much all of them right now. And it just gives them, I mean, you can just see the map control that they have right now. Gonna be picking up that first tower of the game here as well. 
I mean, when most of your kit's power comes from the your ability to capture these towers. Looks like we see, oh, Flanker Rooney coming out. They're trying to escape. Dollar, the flash, the sun coming in. Did it Flamingo flashes away. And he's still gonna continue. He's able to get himself out. And the point actually flashed over the, uh, the wall to try to help out his server here. And a lot of members from these teams are gonna be grouping up in the bottom half of this map, but it looks like they may just be returning over to the lane. So a really aggressive move coming in. Teleport used by Valor as well as the Flash to try to pick up that kill, but Dirty Flamingo was able to escape. And right now, Hawthorne just in a position where they're forced to react to all of Irvine's aggressive pushes. And like I said before, when you're the one who's constantly on the back, but constantly trying to take cues from the other team's actions, and especially when this other team is like this much gold ahead. And look oh, at this! Oh! Double stun on the solo player! Into so much damage from Asimov! Immediately burst down Napoleon time and time again. He's just been getting really caught out by the CC from Leona. Um, that was just one rotation of autos and spells from Asimov. I think he got an auto off of Piercing Lane. That was it. And they're still diving! Yes, and he just wants to keep going and keep going again. Asimov here with the follow-up damage. Whoa. A great explosive cast! This guard jump and A flashing away. Asimov can't quite follow effectively. Shockwave coming in, he lands on the Crudescent. Oh, they get a lot of damage down onto him, but the Grom is doing some damage himself here. His son is trying to make get himself away from here. Oh, oh. Sun picks up the kill before going down. But Flips comes in from the side. Junior Flamingo is gonna be falling. Meanwhile, Couch Warmer is somehow still on the run. Red Six is right on his heels though. And this should be a, uh, another kill going over from the side of Irvine, and it's the second kill there for Breadsticks. I mean, while they did end up giving a kill over to Sun, and that's not necessarily optimal, the fact that Asimov can use his gold a lot more effectively at this point in the game, considering who he is, his champion, his kit, I would say it's completely worth it right there to give Asimov the extra little boost, especially considering how far he is ahead of the opposing ADC. Right now, taking a look at gold, 2730 gold ahead of the opposing Sivir. We're 16 minutes, 17 minutes into the game. Dirty Flamingo is still sitting on pieces of an Infinity Edge while Lucian has an IE, a Zeal, Yellow Shoes, Jay's on my feet. I'm swagging all up in this club. Lucian just rips through everybody so fast right now. This low range ADC, even if you can get to him, he just deletes you. Yeah, for sure. And we are seeing some pressure on the Dragon Pit now. It has spawned. Then we trying to, you know, get these Skarn Spires down here. And now... Let me see what these guys can do. So, Dragon's up. Some pressure coming around here. So, it looks like, I mean, Hawthorne definitely looking to contest this one. Both top laners, though, are on the other side of the map. May just be a 4v4 if a fight breaks out. But I'm pretty sure Irvine should have a pretty solid uh, advantage here as they move into the pit area. Oh, they're split up. This is really bad. Oh, and the solar flare lands. This guard chomp and A just completely doomed there. Shark, shark, shock wave didn't even do a dent. And that's going to be a very easy pick and should be a very easy dragon coming out here for the side of Irvine High School. Lack of communication and the fact that they're so far behind right there. If they stuck together and they all managed to communicate, all right, we're going to go up towards the blue buff. But instead, they got split up. Easy picking for Leona because if you burn the solar flare and he just manages to flash away, all right, it's a 60 second cooldown for a five minute cooldown. But at the same time, the best thing could happen for them, they get the ticket. Oh! Oh, right into the back line. He throws someone out with the upper divide. And they absolutely demolish people under this tower. Going in for the dive. They don't care. Under the second tower now. Valor looks like he should be able to survive. And that was just such an aggressive move coming in and it pays off there as the dives do come through. Gonna be seeing that first middle uh, outer tower fall. Looks like the inner tower is up next. And Irvine High School really pulling ahead now in this game. So where Hawthorne is lacking in conviction and decision making, Irvine High is delivering extra. Chipotle style, extra steak, throwing some guac on top of there. Every time we see an opening, we're going to wrap that burrito up and munch it down. 16 to 2, 20 minutes into the game, translating to 11,000 in gold. Zipper just finished that IE at 20 minutes into the game. And Lucian going to have enough gold to finish out that PD. So... Whatever steps Hawthorne is trying to take to desperately get back into this match, Irvine High is just kicking them down, spitting on them, taking their lunch money. High school bullies in this game. Oh, Flash Hook not going to land there. Asimov is able to dash away. So, 
If only they went to that play. Wasn't quite able to get it. Advantages continue to stack up here. 12,000 gold now in favor, and there's still no dragons, no towers. Irvine High School really just taking this commanding lead into their own hands. And they've just been looking to make these plays. Look, the damage coming out of these area. You will get caught off by Hook, though. Oh, Whoa. he cannot see out the, the flash. Will not let him escape. Ember Survive coming in and try to survive. Nice. He's just shut down. Another kill over to Sun. He is stacking up on these. 3, 2, and 0. Uh, I mean, this is... Sun is just bringing all the kills for his teams right now. But that was really a team play there. The Thresh is a pretty big part of that one. The Hook is going to be landing as he runs right back into this one. The kill goes over to Napoleon, so... Be able to break the streak of uh, all the kills going over to Sun, and that's actually some nice, pretty nice picks. And they actually want to go for more. Here comes the Silver Ultimate. Napoleon wants to go in. Who can they get pick off here? Yeah, they pull an Asimov, but oh, that explosive cast was huge because he wasn't able to take him into the back line. The Solar Flare does come down, doesn't land, but Asimov decides he wants to engage and he wants to pick up kills. That's a double kill coming out for him. Here comes the calling. They want to continue a triple kill coming in. That's gonna be for oh, the that's quadra, quadra kill. But Dirty Flamingo is looking like he wants to make the home run back to the base. Breadsticks, he cannot catch him up. There's a slow they flash in. Yes, so that's the pentagill for Asimov. Picks it up 21 minutes in on the Lucian. So huge plays made by went to Napoleon. Ends up in two desperately needed kills for Hawthorne. And all of a sudden, right when that mid tower hits, indecision yet again, they get split up. They allow Asimov to come and destroy face. And here comes the Surrender Crusader kit. Yeah, what a game coming out from Irvine High School. Really just dominating those early, just pretty much dominating the entire game there. Explosive end there as the Pentagon comes in for Asimov. He just got so fed in that game. Most gold earned in the game by far, actually. And uh, really well played coming out from him. Yeah, both games was really Irvine High flexing their muscles, showing, hey, yeah. we're showing up to the 2015 season. We're strong. Other schools have to be afraid of us. But then again, like you said, Nine more weeks of this, a lot of time for these schools to get comfortable, yeah. get familiar, and who knows what, ha what could happen at the end. Yeah, and the thing is we run it with a Swiss format, so as you continue to win, you'll be facing harder and harder teams. Teams that go too well in the next round, they'll be facing teams that went too well. And they'll be facing, as they continue to move on, they'll be facing teams with the same record as them. So we should be seeing some close matches, especially getting to maybe like the third or fourth week. It should be some pretty interesting games then. But guys, that's going to be all for today. We do have two more matches coming up tomorrow. And uh, I believe those matches are James Monroe High School versus Evergreen High School at uh, 5 p.m. PDT tomorrow. Followed by Westview High School B versus Hamilton High School C. Uh, it'll be Piscator. Or Pis uh, Piscator, you got it right. Piscator, okay. Piscator here with Jump tomorrow. But before we go, of course, you do want to give a shout out to our sponsors. Twitch, Newegg, Rock Hat, Jinx. MSI, uh, Loot Crate, and Tespa. Also, check out the High School Star League for more information. Go to our website, hsstarleague.com. Uh, follow us on Twitter at hsstarleague. Like us on Facebook uh, on hsstarleague, as well as follow the stream here. Uh, to, uh, next week is going to be the start of all of our games. So we'll be having Dota 2, StarCraft 2, Hearthstone, and League of Legends all being broadcasted to this channel. Uh, but before we want to close out, of course, gotta give a shout out to ourselves. So you can follow me at Twitter, at Kusetti Kidding. Where can we find you, man? You can find me at Piscator Josh. You see it on your screen right now. So be sure to give us both a follow. We'll be sure to talk to everybody. Have a good time. Yep, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all tomorrow.